Chapter 61, its name is Damien's Lab. Poyo Poyo and Lily San were threatening each other. This mass production model, don't think you can look down on me just because you received a slightly better name. Oh my, Poyo Poyo San, that means you're recognizing that my name is more wonderful then? Yes, that's right. My gosh, Sama is wonderful, and then he gave me a lovely name like Lily. But, your Poyo Poyo, is that a name? Poyo Poyo raised up a giant hammer with teary eyes. Lily San readied a broom. You're making fun of Chicken Dickwad. It's only me who can make fun of him. I sighed. Oi, don't rampage here. You're being a bother. Damien was alternately looking at the remodeled cart and the blueprint that I brought. He also agreed and glared at Lily San. It's busy right now. The two of them dropped their shoulders in dejection from getting scolded, but they immediately straightened themselves into a dignified stance. I wished they would be like that all the time. Damien looked at the remodeled cart while adding corrections to the blueprint. The shape isn't bad, there are many aspects of it that are worth seeing, but the application of knowledge regarding magic tools to it is the basics of the basics. I think it can still be improved. I didn't understand what he was writing on the blueprint. It wasn't because of reason like his letters were messy or the like, but it was too advanced that I couldn't keep up. While I was feeling perplexed, Poyo Poyo peered onto the blueprint. I see, if it's done here. After that, this one is. The blueprint was revised. Do you think that you can somehow manage? Poyo Poyo turned around in response to my words while I was looking from behind. Rejoice, chicken dickwad. With this, the armored vehicle might be able to move. Really? I didn't think that heavy armored vehicle would be able to move. If it could move it would definitely become reliable. Damien put his hand on his chin and nodded several times while staring at the blueprint. This vehicle is really interesting. With this, horses will become unnecessary, won't it? I shrugged. As expected, that won't be possible, I think. The prerequisite is to be able to use magic, so the people who can use it will absolutely be few in number. The way I said it was bad, but, its strong point was that even someone like Clarissan who could only barely use magic would be able to drive it. However, the number of people who could use magic in this world were few. Damien looked at the revised car and grinned. Surely his interest was fanned up. I want to ask one thing though, what is its name? I tilted my head. Cart. Just like that? Yep. H-M-M. Damien lost interest to the naming like that, but he was looking like he was having fun seeing the cart structure and the like. Lily San was watching Damien, who was like that with a look of ecstasy. Aye, my gosh, Jin Sama is too lovely today, too. With a look like she was going to drool, she was watching Damien, who fundamentally wouldn't do anything except things that interested him. Was it just as I thought? That it wasn't that these girls were broken, but it was that the thing called an automaton was fundamentally strange? Poyo Poyo was looking vexed. M, my chicken dickwad is also a hopeless human who doesn't lose against him just so you know. I couldn't just let that slide. Which aspect of me is a hopeless human, huh? In the first place, just why are you two competing on which one is more hopeless? The two of them looked at each other and then they twisted their bodies while blushing. It's because it's more rewarding to devote ourselves to a hopeless human. I'm waiting for Chicken Dickwad to be even more hopeless and make me work like a slave. A dignified Goshijin Sama will be lovely too, but a Goshijin Sama who won't be able to live with me is arousing. For us automatons, the most wonderful Goshijin Sama is one that makes us take care of them. I couldn't understand. Arya was rubbing her eyes sleepily. The season was changing to autumn. Recently, it was getting colder. Today she didn't have any plan to go to the private school or the dojo. She was sleeping leisurely from the morning, but she was awoken by the voice that came from outside. 
Lyle and the others who went out to the garden were making strange poses since the morning. Now, today too we're starting from the usual stance. Stance of Raging Sparrow Sparrow They expressly brought out balls and placed planks on them where they stood and made poses. The two of them were making poses firmly in the situation where it was difficult to balance their bodies. Arya who was sneaking a look at them from the window was terribly. As I thought, they look stupid like that. A stance of standing on one leg with both hands spread out like wings. The stance was full of openings. Poya Poya was smiling seeing the two of them seriously making the stance. However, Lyle and Shannon were completely serious. Sometimes they would quarrel with each other, but they also looked like a close brother and sister like that. Arya stretched her body. She had grown slightly taller than before. Her body was growing even more flexible. It was the result of coming to Arumsa's and joining a different dojo than Sophia. Her equipment were placed inside her room, but right now other than the spear she was usually using there were also various other things like a short spear, a knife and the like. Even so, it's good that recently it's getting easier to go through the day. Thinking back of how a little while ago she would wake up drenched in sweat, Arya was thankful that the temperature had lowered and it became easier to go through the day. Perhaps I'll go out somewhere today. She finished changing clothes and went out of her room, then she ran into Miranda there. The atmosphere was awkward. However, Miranda herself didn't look bothered at all. Good morning, Arya. You really slept well. If it's breakfast, then there is some on the table. Her attitude was normal the same like before. The wickedness that she sometimes showed didn't show up on the surface right now. You're making me feel out of sorts. Just which of your personalities is the real one? Miranda chuckled. The kind Miranda that she met when they were reunited at first. Miranda who said that she wanted Lyle and disturbed their harmony. To Arya, she looked like a different person. It's not like there is any need for me to quarrel with everyone for the whole day after all. Because that's tiring. Besides, Lyle also hates spiteful things. By that, you mean that if Lyle doesn't care about it you will do various things behind the scenes? I myself also hate things like ugly exchanges or squabbles between women. Arya was the type whose hand would move first before her mouth. She had an open-hearted personality and hated the conversations and squabbles that were characteristic between women. Miranda shrugged. Of course you are. Arya is candid like a man after all. But, as expected, it's not admirable how you're leaving your underwear lying around the changing room. Lyle was troubled by that. Arya's face went red. The, that wasn't me. Miranda smirked. Arya denied it, but she recalled several days where she might have done something like that. No, no way, so it got seen. If you don't be a bit more modest, Lyle will be appalled by you. Setting that aside, Lyle will challenge the dungeon again in one more month. You should prepare properly. Arya's face was slightly red, even so she focused on the talk. Finally? Are we troubled for money or something? They hadn't worked for several months. Although they got a lot of money, this was Aramsa's. Whether it was private schools or dojos, it took money to learn something. Arya thought that perhaps their financial state would soon be strained. It's because we used a lot of money. Arya thought that she had caused an inconvenience for everyone, but it wasn't like she could enter the dungeon alone. She was a member of a party, so she couldn't just act by herself. However Miranda was exasperated. Could it be you don't know? Eh? Lyle, recently he was earning several hundred gold coins. Arya was shocked hearing that. Lies! Miranda talked about what Lyle was doing recently while looking a bit happy. It's true. He went to Professor Damien's place and remodeled the cart together with Clara. You know, that thing that can move by itself. Ah, that thing. But, 
Can you earn money with that? Recently Arya was also busy that she didn't really grasp what Lyle and the others were doing. Because of that she didn't know about Lyle earning a lot of money. I think he can make a living with that. Well, the person himself wants to conquer floor B30. It doesn't look like he wants to make that as his main occupation. It's a bit of a waste, but it's fine because that's just like Lyle. It doesn't look like he is just playing around, even so with the situation being like this, just what did he come to Aramsis for? That was the doubt that Arya harbored. But she could only laugh hearing Lyle's recent situation. The, that guy is also not doing bad, huh? Miranda said that she was in the middle of cleaning, so she parted from Arya after that. When she was leaving. That's how it is so you should prepare properly. After that, I hope that this time there won't be anything exasperating again from you, Arya. Arya stared at the back of Miranda who was provoking her and she made a complicated expression. As I thought, Miranda's got a bad personality. She muttered that and headed to the living room. That's right. I've got to double check with Lyle. And then, she thought to ask regarding their plan in one more month. Inside the storehouse. I was nervous from the morning. Poya Poya was also looking serious today. Chicken dickwad, here. She handed me a cylinder object that needed to be carried with two arms. It was the remaining component. This thing that had two spherical glasses the size of a palm embedded on it was the head part that we would attach after this. Clarissan took off her glasses and wiped her tears with her sleeve. So we finally come this far. We had gone through days of repeating trial and error of remodeling the card until now, but all of those were for the sake of this day today. Shannon who joined in the middle tilted her head in front of the armored vehicle. Hey, by the way where are you going to attach it? It was an armored vehicle without anything peculiar in appearance, but actually the interior was greatly different. The machines inside that couldn't be used were taken out and magic tools were installed inside. The interior was also cleaned so that it could be loaded with baggage. I carefully held the head part and turned my gaze to the armored vehicle. The reason we were going to install a head was because of the advice from Damien that it would be convenient when we were operating it with magic. The vehicle's frame only gave an unrefined atmosphere. The head part that looked somewhat stupid would soften it with its charm. Certainly the remodeled cart was also good but, when it was attached with a head like this, it made us felt excessively attached to it. Will it be in the middle as expected? Clara Sand put a hold on that. Isn't that too simple? Actually, won't it be better at the center of the ceiling? Poyo Poyo refused. If we put it there, it will be a hindrance when we're placing baggage on there. Shannon pointed to inside the vehicle. It'll be pitiful if the face is outside. Let's place it inside. When we started to argue, the ancestors inside the jewel were also similarly in disagreement. It's the head so the position is obviously at the center. I told you already that it'll be a nuisance there. Everyone calm down. Isn't it fine even if we place it inside? It's related to the precision of the handling, so it's important. However, it'll be lonely with just a head. As I thought arms will also be necessary, won't it? At first, I thought it was just a mere box, but now that I look at it, it has a magnificently rugged and manly appearance. We and also the ancestors inside the jewel were making a ruckus. Amidst that, the only one who was calm was Arya-san. It seemed that she came to the storehouse because she had some business with me. No, if you just need to put it on then anywhere is fine. I understood that she wasn't interested with this, but as expected her statement that anywhere was fine was unforgivable. The ancestors inside the jewel were also enraged. The idiot should just shut up. This is important. Why don't you understand that? Good grief, I wonder why she won't understand. Something like this is really important. 
someone who isn't even interested in that speaking out of turn like this. She wasn't involved in this until now, so she has no attachment at all. To not understand what is good from this thing, what a hopeless girl. The inside of the jewel was noisy. Naturally, even Poyo Poyo couldn't stay quiet. You there, that was rude in front of this crystallization of love between me and Chicken Dickwad. Clara Sand calmly asserted herself. I'm also involved in its creation. Shannon was also the same. I was also helping out. Arya Sand scratched her head. Somehow, recently her gesture was becoming like a man. No, if you're just going to put it on then anywhere is fine. If it's all right, as long as it doesn't get in the way, then it's all right, even if you put it here. Arya San took the head part from me and then placed it at the front right side of the armored vehicle. The person herself wasn't interested at all and only wanted to finish her business quickly but... Great! Rather than placing it at the center, this was somehow better. Clara San was also in admiration. This is, perhaps sometimes even the opinion of an unrelated person cannot be underestimated. It feels like this is better than placing it at the middle. It was placed at the front part, so it was properly visible when it was looked from the front. In addition, it wasn't right at the middle, so our eyes were automatically attracted to it. It also felt like the balance was a bit bad, but how should I say it, it made it better instead. The ancestors were also flipping their attitude quickly and praised Arya-san. These guys were really just doing as they pleased. This is quite good. Yeah, sometimes even an idiot can be useful. Arya-chan, I believe that you're a capable child. Not the middle, but the right side. That's certainly good. If you call that spot the safe choice, then it's really the safe choice. The functionality won't be harmed in that spot, this is actually a really good positioning. It feels like she placed it there because that's where she can reach but, the positioning is certainly good. I turned toward Arya-san and grasped both her hands. Thank you Arya-san. Because of you this porter is now finished. Arya-san was bewildered by the reaction of her surroundings while making an uncomprehending face at my thanks. Eh? The, that's all right? Or rather, porter. Yes, until now I was calling it cart, but I noticed. This thing wasn't a cart anymore, wasn't it? That crossed my mind. Perhaps it wasn't wrong that it was a cart in the broad sense, but it was already a different thing when compared to the same cart. However, it was also lonely to call it armored vehicle. It would feel like calling a dog, dog. That was why I named it. I took out a book regarding giving a name from inside the luggage. It was a book I received from Clarisan. Actually, I thought of the name from reading this. Clarisan was taken aback and turned around. Shannon was averting her gaze. Poyo Poyo dropped the tool that she brought in order to fix the head in place. Her face looked like she would burst into tears any time. Chicken dickwad, what is the meaning of that? I tilted my head. No, everyone said that a name is important, so I thought about it seriously. Poyo Poyo swung her twin tails until it was disheveled, and she yelled. Porter! That's an adorable name. And yet, why am I still Poyo Poyo? Please think about my name too seriously. Poyo Poyo hugged the armored vehicle that received a proper name ahead of her and cried. Porter, I'm glad that you received a splendid name. My name is Poyo Poyo you know? Poyo Poyo. I'm envious to you who was given a name by Chicken Dickwad who thought about it seriously that he even used a book as reference. Everyone was sending glances at me. This atmosphere that seemed to say give her a proper name already was unpleasant. I averted my gaze. I, I'll think of the name after this. Clara San was exasperated. When you told me that you wanted a book before, I thought that it would be for Poyo Poyo San. The atmosphere of the surroundings was criticizing me. Shannon took advantage of it and made a snide remark at me. You're really the worst. 
If it's me, I'll be able to think of a better name. However, Poyo Poyo's face turned serious here. No, rather than receiving a name from you, I'll rather be called Poyo Poyo. Why? Shannon was angry and took the stance of Raging Sparrow, but Arya san placed her hand on her forehead for some reason. No, I don't care anymore. More importantly, we're going to the dungeon in one more month, right? How far will we go? I folded my arms. One month from now it will be the serious attempt to aim until floor B30. I'm thinking that in two weeks we will try challenging the dungeon once in order to check everyone's teamwork and some minor details. Arya San nodded. Two weeks from now you say? I get it. I'll prepare myself but, what are we going to do for the serious attempt? We're going to challenge the dungeon with just us? I thought for a bit. That'll depend on Porter's test run. As expected, I think we will need more helping hands, but I haven't decided how big of the scale we will need. Chapter 62, Armored Vehicle In a room of an inn. Three men were gathering there. Alcohol was placed on the table. Zalsa and Binur were drinking it. The client Ludhor was sitting on a chair. He was tapping his foot from irritation. Boy, you guys have found out their schedule, haven't you? Binir was drinking alcohol while placing a memo. I asked their plan to enter the dungeon from the staff. There are some staff who don't like them, so it's easy to ask for the schedule. Ludhor snatched the paper and confirmed the plan of Lyle's party. So they'll enter the dungeon in one more week. We're going to attack at that time. Zalsa laughed slightly. This damn small fry is getting carried away. He ridiculed Ludhor inside his heart, even so his words outside were polite. I don't recommend that. Besides we'll also need to prepare, so let's ambush them at their second expedition. Lyle's party planned to go to floor B10 at the first time. At the second time it was written that they planned to conquer floor B30. It seemed the staff asked Lyle thoroughly, so they also obtained the information that Lyle's party would challenge the boss of floor B30. Binur drank down the alcohol inside his glass. We'll aim when they're completely exhausted after working hard collecting income. Let's decide whether to aim when they're fighting or lying in ambush at that time. The floor traveling device was located from floor B5 until floor B25. It would be troublesome if they reached floor B-25 and asked help from other adventurers. Zalsa stared at his clean nails. They were well cared after and today, too, they were glinting prettily. Preparation is important for this kind of assault. We have to investigate the floor so they won't be able to run away and lay traps before waiting for the prey to enter. Well, please leave it to us. Ludhor stood up in front of the two. I'll also prepare. You guys, don't you dare fail. Zalsa saw off Ludhor, closing the door violently. He then clicked his tongue. Damn brat. Binur laughed. Boy, your true self is coming out. Oops, pardon me. Binur was grinning faintly while watching Zalsa putting up his mask. And what are we going to do? Even Ludhor looked like prey between the two of them. They were adventurers who were carrying out misdeeds daily. In the first place, they never thought of carrying out the request honestly. Accidents often happen inside the dungeon. There's no guarantee that Brat won't erase us, and I also got bored already with Arumsas. I want to rampage with a blast before leaving. Binur also agreed. He is just a second or third son who can't inherit his house anyway. There's no need to worry about his house's reprisal even if we erase him. It seems that Lyle Dai has also saved up quite a lot. The request this time is a delicious one. The two would lay their hands even towards their client. They poured alcohol into their glass and toasted. Let's leave Arumsas after cleaning up everything. We got to earn big for the last one. The two adventurers laughed. 
The place was the underground dungeon floor B10. When we stepped inside, the floor boss wasn't inside. It seemed it had been exterminated by other adventurers. We walked with Porter at the center and looked across the room of the floor boss. What now? The reason everyone was making a perplexed face was because we arrived at floor B10 faster than planned. Even Novum was holding her staff in bewilderment. It's because Poya Poya San mapped the area and Shannon Chan notified us of the threat at the surroundings beforehand. We're able to reach until this far without any problem. A box was placed on the ceiling of Porter. Magic stones and other things were stuffed there. It seemed that the results surpassed even Novum's imagination. Wa, what do we do now, Lyle Sama? Originally we planned to descend until 4B10 and then returned back to the surface in three days. However, we arrived at our destination in one day without any problem. I guess we'll return to floor B9 and camp there. Like this, we'll return back by tomorrow. Clara Sand got down from Porter. She got down from the spot that Poyo Poyo called the driver's seat and told me how the driving sensation was until now. Lyle San, about Porter. Was there any problem? If you're tired from driving, I'll switch with you. Clara San shook her head at my suggestion and answered. It's strange. The driving sensation is just too easy. It's easier than the remodeled cart from before, is that possible? I looked at Porter. Ah, you mean that. Oi, Poyo Poyo. When I called Poyo Poyo, she brought out a box from inside the vehicle. Clara San tilted her head, then she was surprised seeing the inside of the box. The box itself was a magic tool. And then, shining inside it was a yellow-green gem paradise, a rare gem that was said to be a magic or that contained mana inside. You possess a magic ore? We obtained it before coming to Aramsa's. We also considered using magic stones or rare metal, but, if we're going to do that anyway then using this would be better, that's what we thought. Porter was too heavy that it needed reinforcement to move it. Magic ore was the best way to obtain the energy for that. It'll be expensive to buy it. We have one so we used that. Clara San put her hand on her forehead as though she was dizzy. I'm surprised that you have something like this. Lyle San, you're really a mysterious person. Is that so? Certainly I was ignorant of the ways of the world but recently I had gotten a bit better. Arya San and Sophia San were approaching while we were deep in talk. Lyle, what are we going to do now? If possible, please decide it quickly. I told Poyo Poyo to put back the box and looked at Novum. Novum was making a troubled face, but she suggested to achieve our original objective. We haven't prepared to advance further than this, how about we return for now and camp? I scratched my head. You're right. Let's stay the night before returning tomorrow. Arya San shrugged. Is that fine even though we plan to stay for two nights? I think we'll be able to earn a bit more money if we stay for two nights. I looked at Porter. Miranda San was looking after Shannon who went outside. She wasn't feeling well from witnessing battle against monsters and dismantling materials from their bodies. Shannon isn't feeling well, besides even if we don't go that far the test drive has gone well. Let's return tomorrow. Things went better than expected, to a degree that it shocked me thinking whether this was all right. This was greatly different from before. Around the time it became night on the surface. We were camping at floor B9. Sleepers breathing could be heard from the surroundings. I was sitting together with Arya San as lookout, a lantern between us. There was friction between us since I was forbidden from using arts, but today there wasn't anything like that. I didn't know what would be a good topic to talk about, but today our conversation was flowing naturally. So even scouting is divided into various types. A lot of Arya San's talk was related to her dojo. It seemed these several months she was going to a dojo almost every day to polish her skills. 
It's amazing. You can check the situation of the area by touching the floor or wall. There are also many types of traps that I have to memorize. At the dojo she was scolded, praised, and liked that she finally felt the effect of her training in real battle. I got the impression that she was having fun with that. You didn't go to the same place as Sophia-san? Arya-san answered awkwardly at my simple question. It's a bit unsuited for me. How should I say it, the mood at her dojo is impossible for me. Arya-san learned various new things, in contrast it seemed Sophia-san who was sleeping right now was fundamentally improving herself as a vanguard. Rather than that, what about Lyle? In the morning I would move my body with Poyo Poyo, and then from there I would tinker with the cart the whole time. After that I would go to the library or Damien's place. Arya-san glanced at the sleeping Clara-san. It seems there is a rumor about you and Clara-san, but, how is it actually? Clara-san? No, there isn't anything like that. I'm on good terms with her, but, there isn't anything more than that. She is really a great help. Arya-san looked down slightly. I, I see. She is someone I want to have as a party member but, it looks like she loves the library and I don't know if she will leave Aramsas to join us. From Clara San's point of view, Aramsas was a place that suited her. The library that was called as the greatest on the continent was big. It would be great if she could come with us. There was one voice that agreed with my muttering. It was the third. Clara Chan is really desirable. I recommend her. Lyle, seduce her to join your party, just like usual. Like that you will be able to read books every day. This guy, just what kind of person was I in his mind? I wished that he wouldn't speak like I would seduce anyone without caring about who they were. Three days later. I, who returned to the surface, brought Novum to go shopping. We arranged for the necessary water and food for aiming to floor B30. We also purchased things like consumable goods. We were only heading to the shops that we used before this, but it was weighing on my mind that recently wasn't talking with Novum. Because of that I went out alone with her but, I looked around. Why are they laughing at me? Not just our fellow adventurers, even the citizens of Aramsas were laughing at me. It seemed that Novum had been listening to the rumors from going out shopping and the like on a routine basis. She averted her gaze. That's, Lyle Soma failed inside the dungeon some time ago, and recently you weren't doing anything as an adventurer so. I was told that our party conquered floor B40 in the blink of an eye after getting acquainted with Damien, but without Damien I continued to fail. It seemed they thought of me as an adventurer without any competency. That kind of rumor is spreading? Novum nodded, even so it seemed she was slightly feeling that something was out of place. I'm hearing about this rumor from recently. That kind of rumor has been going on even before but, they weren't this horrible. It seemed that the rumors were worsening recently, but even before that there were already various bad rumors about me spreading. That's horrible. Then, the second's voice came from inside the jewel. Now then, I wonder about that. The sixth replied to the worried second. Let's watch the situation for now. I couldn't understand the two's conversation. Then Novum turned her gaze towards a crowd. I also followed Novum's gaze. There wasn't anything that felt particularly strange. What's wrong? I thought we were being watched, but it might just be my imagination. I immediately grasped the jewel, but there wasn't any reply. The ancestors were staying silent. Just what was going on? Novum turned a serious expression towards me. It might be better to be slightly on guard. Let's tell everyone to not go out alone as much as possible. I could only reply yeah. Until now I had arts, so I could immediately detect anyone with ill will. But, right now I couldn't sense anything even if there was someone with ill will nearby. It's amazing that you can feel it, Novum. I honestly thought that Novum was amazing. It's something like an instinct. 
besides they're following us unnaturally, so I noticed them. I felt slightly ashamed to not notice that. The next day. I was having lunch together with Nerk San. He was an adventurer that I was acquainted with in Aramsas. We were getting along well. I consulted with him about the matter of being followed. Perhaps, they're targeting the girls in your party? Novum and the others? Nerk San folded his arms and then made a serious expression. People will be jealous of a party with one man and multiple women after all. Especially when it comes to adventurers, who many of them are rough people, there are also many shoddy people among them. Certainly, the possibility that Novum and the others were targeted was high. Thinking carefully, there were only beautiful girls around me. Shannon and Poya Poya were out of the question but everyone else was pretty. Will it be better for us to be careful? It'll be better for your party to not do anything alone. You guys also have to not forget to pay attention to the surroundings. I slowly nodded. Nurk San seemed to feel relieved at my attitude and changed the topic. More importantly, how is it going with your comrades? It's better than before but I feel that there is still gap between them as usual. Nurk San, who was worried for me, sent me a sympathetic look. That's awful. Though I think it will be great if they can be more understanding. Nurk San was endeavoring to treat all of his party members equally as their comrades so that the peace of the party wasn't disturbed. And what he was doing was working well, so I was really envious of him. It seems that your party will be doing a big job after this, so perhaps it'll be better if you have a talk with them beforehand. If you convey your feeling there, surely everyone will understand. Seeing Nurk San's smile made me motivated. You're right. I'll make it a success this time for sure. I had been acquainted with a really reliable person. The sixth was grumbling complaints. I wouldn't have any hardship if everything could be solved with just talking. I was, I was. The fifth spoke coldly. You only reaped what you sowed, so just shut up. The sixth who was scared of his wife seemed to be hopelessly jealous toward Nurk San's happiness. Just what kind of married life did he go through? While I was talking with Nurk San, a woman wearing glasses called out to him. GZ, Nurks, so you're in this kind of place. She had large breasts and wore academy uniform. She was Nurk San's new party member who he encountered at Aramsa's. Oops, it's already this time. Lyle Cohen, I'll take my leave. Thank you very much for listening to me. I thanked him and left the restaurant. Nurk San's comrades were waiting outside. They were getting along well with each other as usual. Seeing that I imagined if my party could also be like this. Yosh, I'll also do my best. Before the big job, I resolved myself to make my comrades to get along better with each other. Miranda watched Aria's back. It's good that she's thinking to properly check the plan. Miranda was curious of what Arya would do after being told that they would head to the dungeon in one more month. She was relieved and returned to her housework. Sophia was out of the house right now. She would talk with her when she returned. I guess I'll pass her if she checks with Lyle about the details at night at the latest. Until now everything would be arranged by Lyle or Novum. The two of them would just go along with their decision. Because of that they would neglect checking the plan by their own initiative. It's good that there's a bit of result from provoking them to take action. Miranda was relieved that the two of them were roused because of her actions. Hum, I didn't really hear that just now, Lyle. What did you say again? I was quailing in front of the smiling Miranda-san. The house of the Sirkri sisters. Coincidentally, there were only the two of us here so I called out to her. Before, I failed when making the suggestion for everyone to get along well when all of them were present, so this time I went around talking to them one by one. However, it was suddenly a formidable enemy from the first person. 
No, that, I'm thinking that it will be great if Miranda-san can get along better with everyone. I was unable to look straight at Miranda-san's face. My gaze wandered around and my voice was getting smaller. Voices laughing at me came from inside the jewel. Lyle, speak up more firmly. Lyle, that's pathetic. You should be more imposing. That's right. The beginning is important in this kind of thing. Lyle, she's still better than my wife. Do your best. What happened with your spirit at the beginning? Do your best, Lyle. Just from the words alone, it sounded like they were giving encouragement, but everyone's voice was filled with laughter. They were having fun watching me. Miranda Sand shrugged. I'm joking, Lyle. However, I'm sorry, but in my personal opinion, what you're asking is impossible. She told me that it was impossible for everyone to get along in our party. And, no, before this everyone got along. That's not what I mean. I intend to do as Lyle wishes, but I'll refuse if it won't be something good for Lyle. She would do it if that was what I wished? I mustered my courage. Then, get along with everyone. What was that? Can you say it one more time for me? Miranda-san made a scary smile and grabbed my shoulders. I'm sorry. I didn't manage to catch your words just now. It's nothing. The sixth talked with a slightly sad voice. Malia's great-granddaughter is scary. Why did she grow to be this kind of woman? The seventh mumbled back. Because she is aunt's great-granddaughter? Miranda San chuckled. If Lyle seriously wishes for it, then I will abide by it any time. That's if you're seriously thinking it by yourself. Miranda San said that and left me. I looked at Miranda San's back and my shoulders dropped. Even though we're going to enter the dungeon tomorrow, will it be fine like this? My anxiety kept getting stronger. In the middle of the night, a group of adventurers were sneaking in the darkness. The senior Benir was leading them. He clicked his tongue seeing Ludhor and other students following behind them. I wish they won't move without a care like that. Zalsa who was walking beside him was exasperated. A thin sword specialized for thrusting was hanging on his waist. It was a sword that not many adventurers used, but Zalsa used nothing but a rapier. Students are bunches with naive thinking. It's useless to think about it. Benir and the others entered the dungeon before Lyle's party came. Ambushing or attacking? The choice would depend on the situation of Lyle's party. Benir stroked his beard. Even though Damien was with them, those guys conquered floor B40 before this. It's dangerous to underestimate them. Besides that strange box is also concerning. You mean the carriage without a horse? If the story is true then I want to obtain it. Then an irritated voice came from behind. It was Ludhor. You guys, be a bit more serious. The two of them scowled outside of Ludhor's view, but it wouldn't be a good idea to quarrel right now. Pardon our rudeness. By the way, isn't your group's number too few? There were only ten of them even including Ludhor. Several of them were students. The rest were wearing hoods that hid their faces. They seemed to be baggage carriers. There's no need for you guys to worry about that. More importantly, absolutely don't let them get away. Anyone other than Miranda is unneeded. Benir and Zalsa, and then the other adventurers were irritated at Ludhor's attitude. Benir responded. Just leave it to us. We're experienced in this. I hope that's true. Ludhor and the others, the group that was targeting Lyle, entered the dungeon. The Entrance of Arumsiza's Underground Dungeon We rode on Porter and entered the dungeon. I put my hand on Shannon's head. Come on, search for the enemy properly. 
On the driver's seat there were Clara Sam, Poyo Poyo, and then me and Shannon. The place was really cramped. Shannon looked sleepy from waking up early in the morning. She brushed away my hand. Shut up. I just need to do it right. Shannon replied with a yawn. I thought that this girl was lacking a sense of tension. Clarissan sat on the driver's seat while using magic. Then Porter's huge body moved forward. We were protected by thick armor. Poyo Poyo discovered enemies at the front. Ma. From the front bat monsters are a proa. Clarissan drove forward expressionlessly and sent the rushing large bats flying. Poyo Poyo looked slightly troubled. Please let me speak it till the end. Clara San was also troubled. Eh? I was told to keep going while ignoring the monsters until floor B10 though. It would take time to fight monsters from the beginning and then collecting their magic stones and materials. In addition it would increase our cargo. The magic stones and the material that could be obtained here had low prices, so we ignored them. I looked at Shannon. Yesterday she was excited and couldn't sleep. She was sleeping on the passenger seat with her mouth drooling. I lightly hit Shannon's head with my palm. Hi, hi. Shannon woke up and looked around. And then she awkwardly wiped her drool while. I, I did clap. She couldn't even speak properly. You, the next time you sleep I'll call Miranda San. Shannon opposed when I said that. You coward, threatening to tell when he saw me like that. This coward gigolo bastard. Could it be you're trying to make the nickname gigolo bastard to stick on me? That's unfortunate. I'm not a gigolo anymore. I'm earning money by myself, and I'm even paying Miranda San my cost of living. Rather, isn't it you who are like a gigolo? Shannon was angry and struggled inside the cramped space. Clara Sand sighed. Rather than that I wish you will decide the route already. In the back of Porter. Novum, Arya, Sophia, Miranda. The four were sitting silently. They were sitting on benches that faced each other. In this situation they had to see each other's faces even if they didn't want to. The four of them were keeping silent. From the front they could hear Lyle and Shannon quarreling, and sometimes Clara's troubled voice. Even though they called it big, if people rode in a space that was loaded with baggage, then the space would be limited. The four of them were sitting face to face in that limited space for several hours. Novum raised a topic. It's rare that all four of us can be face to face like this, how about we talk? Aria was sending glances at Miranda's face. I don't mind but, what are we going to talk about? Something like Sophia's change into an Amazon? Sophia stood up. Wait, who are you calling an Amazon? Could it be, you're making fun of everyone in the dojo? All of them are all good people. Certainly they were all good people, but it was a fact that the women of the dojo were called Amazons on the street. Miranda chuckled. Certainly her skin exposure is increasing recently. She was sleeping in her underwear during summer and got seen by Lyle. Aria laughed. Hear that. Recently you were too defenseless. Novum turned a smile at Aria. Aria-san is also the same. Lyle-sama put back the towel blanket that you kicked off you several times. It was a bit unseemly to open your legs like that. Arya hit her face with both her hands and went red until her ears. Sophia retorted back. Arya is more terrible than me, isn't it? I, in the first place peeking at girls sleeping, that's. Miranda-san was exasperated. If you sleep on the sofa in the living room, then anyone will see. It was because you were tired that you weren't awakened. Sophia went red until her ears in embarrassment and shrunk into herself on her seat. Miranda was having fun looking at the two of them like that. Novum said to her. By the way, Miranda-san. 
You aren't troubling Lyle Sama, are you? Miranda smiled, but it was a provoking smile. I've no intention of troubling him. I believe that this is also for Lyle's sake. Is that perhaps a self-righteousness? Isn't it for your own sake rather than for Lyle Sama's sake? The two of them were smiling, but Arya and Sophia were in discomfort. Miranda retorted back at Novum. It's you who is self-righteous. In the first place, why? But, Porter suddenly stopped in the middle and the talk was interrupted. Arya couldn't endure the atmosphere and raised her voice. Wah, what happened? If something happened then she wouldn't need to stay in this place. She was even feeling such joyous mood. The rear door opened. Poya Poya was standing there. She was holding a large hammer on her shoulder. It was slightly dirty with blood. My apologies. A slightly big monster appeared so we took it down. We will only recover the magic stone so we wanted some help but it seems everyone is having fun here. Everyone, please wait on standby here. Poya Poya who guessed that the mood was bad only said that and closed the door. Voices came from outside. Eh, where's everyone? It looks like they are having fun talking, so I left them to it. It's a conversation between women. Chicken dickwad, you mustn't peek okay? No one's going to peek. Well, fine. We'll take care of it with you and me. Lyle and the others seemed to finish dealing with the monsters, after a while Porter started moving once more. However, this time there was no one who opened their mouth. They only passed the time silently. I was thinking. My porter is too strong. Porter was advancing through the passage inside the dungeon, but against average monsters they would be blown away. Even large monsters would be sent flying easily. And then Porter would run over it and advance forward. It felt as though it was designed from the start to be able to advance through any kind of bad road. Whether it was its rugged design or tough armor, there wasn't any decoration to it. Clarissan slightly raised her hand. Air, I was also involved in its making. Poya Poya was enraged. Please wait. It's this Poya Poya who finished the most of it. The mother of this child is me. Shannon was sitting on the passenger's seat and eating sweets. Who cares about that? More importantly there is a group of monster lying in ambush at the front. Poya Poyo thrust her fist forward. Mumu! There are only small ones there. We're bulldozing through here. Clara San was apathetic. Then I'm driving forward. The thing that was called an engine according to Poya Poya roared and Porter accelerated. The monsters at the front were sent flying. It became really easy with just Porter here. Will this be all right in regards to my task? I was worried if the ancestors would complain about Porter, but then cheers came from inside the jewel. That's awesome, Porter. I also want one of this. If we can mass-produce Porter, perhaps this will cause a revolution in the world. If only we had this thing in my era. What toughness! This is what a man's ride is. I also want to try driving it. It seemed I was too worried. They sounded like they were having fun. I shook my head. Then Aryasan showed her face from the rear. Hey, what floor we're on right now? I lost track of it, with only time passing. The shaking inside Porter was light. It would cause our butts to hurt from sitting for many hours inside a normal horse carriage, and yet it didn't happen with Porter. But, the trip was too smooth that the four riding in the rear didn't have anything to do. I turned my gaze to Poya Poyo. She guessed what I wanted to say with just that. We have arrived at floor B-16. On the surface, right now it's slightly before 6 o'clock in the evening. I believe there won't be any problem starting to prepare the camp right now. There were a lot of places where this girl was troubling, but she was reliable for something like this. 
Floor B16 in one day. Like this, will we get any turn? It couldn't be helped that Arya-san was worried. In the first place, Porter was just too amazing, surpassing our imagination. As expected, I think our pace will drop from floor B20 ahead. Shannon shrieked at that time. Jaya! She hugged me and grabbed my clothes with her hands that were dirty with sweets. When everyone turned their gaze to the front where Shannon was looking, there was a monster crawling on the wall to escape from Porter. It was insect type that wasn't too dangerous, but Shannon was really weak against bugs. I tore off Shannon who was hugging me from feeling really scared. Get a hold of yourself. Why did you scream, huh? Shannon was tearful. That was scary, Mon. She spoke cutely using Mon, but it didn't affect my heart at all. Well, fine. More importantly, search for a place where we can camp. You, aren't you acting cold to just me? Shannon glared at me, so I replied with a smile. Obviously. I hate yo. Say dash. Shannon's fist that was launched, with the twist of her waist backing it sunk into my stomach. Yo, you. Your smile just now was irritating. Shannon brushed up her light violet hair and laughed seeing me crouching down. As expected from the result of Poyo Poyo's teaching, it was really painful. Chapter 63, Fruits of Labor Floor B18 We advanced until there and found a room without any monster before starting to prepare the camp. The entrance of the room was narrow, so Porter couldn't enter inside. We parked it in front of the entrance's wall to prevent monster's infiltration, then we moved separately based on our role inside the dungeon's room. Arya-san was taking out foldable tables and chairs from the baggage. Hey, is it all right to put them here? Sophia-san was assembling the toilet together with Clara-san. The construction is really secure, isn't it? Poya Poyo san prepared this. How should I say it, she created various convenient tools for us. After placing lanterns and the preparations for camping were progressing, Poya Poyo began preparing dinner. Elaborate food cannot be created? That's just an excuse. This Poya Poyo for chicken dikwad sake. Poya Poyo, you're noisy. Cut the ingredients quickly. Miranda-san was preparing the ingredients quickly. Novum was also taking out things like blankets. It's nice that we can load the baggage like this, making it easier. Like this everyone was moving in order to prepare the camp but... You're really like a gigolo, huh? You're saying that to me? Shannon and I were sitting on a wooden crate. It wasn't like we were ditching our work, it was a rest period for me and Shannon. Shannon would search the for enemies using her eyes, and I had entered combat several times. When the preparations were over Clarissan would also take a rest. I wasn't particularly doing any work. I was in the middle of my break. Then Novum approached with a smile. Lyle Sama, Shannon Chan. Both of you please wipe yourself first with hot water. After dinner, please brush your teeth and sleep okay? Both Shannon and I replied yes and stood up. Shannon glared at me. Don't peep. I snorted. What will I peep from you? Do you have anything worth seeing? Shannon's face was bright red and punched with her fist, so I took a step back and brushed it with my hand. Shannon got irritated by that and kicked. Shannon could only swing around her hand if her head was held in place a little while ago, but right now she was moving quite well. Oh, you want to have a go? Our score until now is my flawless victory you know? Shannon yelled. Ook ya! Don't get conceited when you're just a gigolo leeching off one Isama. Today is the day I deal with you for sure. Shannon took the stance of Raging Sparrow. This girl was serious. I also took the stance of Raging Sparrow in opposition. Don't underestimate me. I'm stronger than you. Then Arya Sand clapped her hands. 
there, don't play around and wipe your body quickly. Arya-san previously didn't know what to do when camping and only moved around in confusion, but now she was doing her work quickly. Shannon and I replied ye, yes, and went to receive the hot water to wipe our bodies. The next day. We advanced until floor B-21 and stood on alert around Porter. Within the darkness, with the lighting turned off, there were footsteps near me. When I turned my face over there anxiously, I found Arya-san returning from her scouting. Don't be that surprised. No, that's because you suddenly showed up. Arya-san's art was acceleration. An art that drastically increased her speed temporarily. She approached the enemy using that, gathered information, and then quickly returned. It seemed that the person herself still couldn't accept it, even so I didn't notice her until she approached Mir. Arya-san told us about the information that she saw. There are three lizard men ahead from here. They're inside a room, but they aren't relaxing so if we pass through nearby they will come out. One of them is carrying a torch. We nodded. Miranda Sand praised her. Oh, that's amazing work. Arya San didn't honestly feel happy. Thanks. Lyle, what are we going to do? It looks like there are no monsters in this area, should we launch a surprise attack with everyone? When I was about to nod in agreement, because that was the safest way, Sophia San shouldered her battle axe. Can you leave it to me? Her voice was really serious. I couldn't really see her face, because it was dark, but I realized that she was serious just from her voice. Lizard Man was a lizard demi-human. Its size easily surpassed an adult male, in addition its physical strength was several times greater than a human. It was a troublesome monster that wielded a large axe or a spear. However, Sophia San was motivated to do it alone. Miranda San talked to me. It might be good for Sophia to be the vanguard with the rest acting as support. As expected, it's irresponsible to make her attack alone. Sophia San agreed. I'm all right with that. Sophia San said that and started walking. Miranda San and I followed behind her as support and moved until the room with lizard men inside. When we arrived at the entrance of the room, the lizard men looked at each other, looking as though they were talking. I nodded when Sophia San finished preparing. Sophia San immediately entered inside from the entrance and threw the battle axe she was carrying. Sophia San. I almost jumped forward in surprise, but Miranda San caught my shoulder. Wait. That girl is an idiot, but she isn't just a simple idiot. Let's watch the situation for a bit more. The battle axe rotated and brought down a single lizard man. Without stopping it stabbed into the wall. The lizard man with a torch opened its large mouth and let out a loud voice, then the other lizard man approached Sophia San. Sophia San thrust her right hand to the side. Come. Then, the battle axe that was stabbed on the wall came out from the wall as though it was being forcefully pulled and rotated. When the lizard man turned around, the battle axe was approaching right before its eyes. Blood splashed and the battle axe returned to Sophia San's right hand. When she once again grasped the rotating battle axe in her right hand, Sophia San immediately took a stance. The only remaining lizard man threw away its torch and approached Sophia San. The lizardman's axe and Sophia San's battle axe clashed and sparks scattered. But, the lizardman's posture was crumbling each time they exchanged two or three blows. Sophia San had a smaller body, and yet the lizard man was the one getting overpowered. The fifth raised his voice inside the jewel. He, not bad. Did the battle axe come back because she turned it into a magic tool? Besides, that Sophia has also gotten better with her use of her art. The sixth was also impressed. The battle axe is lightened when it's lifted up and weighted when it swing down. Well, she has an art that controls weight, so anyone will have that kind of idea to use it, but a lot of training will be necessary for her to be able to do that skillfully. She obtained a magic tool and polished her own art. 
It was simple, but she had undoubtedly gotten stronger because of that. I thought that it was really like the serious Sophia-san. I created a light source inside the room and brightened the area. Sophia-san was jumping and swinging down her battle axe at that timing. Behind me Miranda-san put away her knife and whistled seeing the power that literally bisected the lizard man into two halves of right and left with one attack. I spontaneously applauded. The third spoke shortly inside the jewel. Well done. He only praised shortly without any teasing. Like this, the two of them had grown greatly, but... I noticed a serious problem here. Actually, I noticed it when we passed through floor B25, but I stayed quiet until we arrived at floor B29. Arya-san would scout, and then if we launched a preemptive strike, Sophia-san would perfectly carry out her job as the vanguard. If Novum burned the monsters using her magic, Miranda-san would respond depending on the situation and covered up any hole. Poyo Poyo would play an active role as both a combat force or a rear support. Clarissan also showed her real ability by driving Porter or giving support. Shannon too, although she was only using her eyes, she was doing her best as a member of the party. Like that we finally reached the time when we were going to challenge the floor boss at floor B30. The fourth's voice came from inside the jewel. Lyle, is it just my imagination that you haven't really done anything until here? Tomorrow it'll finally be the battle against the floor boss. While the party was getting high-spirited in preparation of that, I noticed that I alone hadn't really been doing anything. I completely realized. The third talked to me with a voice that sounded really worried. I don't want to say it, but Lyle right now is really a gigolo. You make the women around you work while not doing anything yourself. Well, that might be a leader's quality, but, as expected this is bad. I called out to Novum in order to help with everyone who was preparing the camp. Novum! I'll help out too! When I raised my voice and approached, Novum tilted her head adorably. But, Novum didn't understand my feeling. Lyle Sama, please rest early for tomorrow. We will take care of this. She said that and returned to her work. I looked around. Everyone had become proficient, but in the first place there was nothing that I could help with. While I was looking around in a dither, my eyes caught Shannon sitting alone on a wooden box looking at me. That Shannon was looking at me and her mouth widened into a grin like a crescent moon. This girl, she was reading my heart. Pooh. When Shannon snickered, anger welled up inside me. I was all right to get reprimanded by someone else. I'd reflect on myself if I got scolded. But, getting laughed at by her was the only thing that I couldn't endure. Shannon too seemed to notice my anger. We both glared at each other silently. Like that, when we were going to take the same stance as fellow disciples of the same style, Shannon's gaze turned towards a corner of the room. Hey, gigolo bastard. Don't call me gigolo bastard. What? Shannon pointed at a direction. A small fly was flying there. The second spoke inside the jewel. Shannon doesn't get scared? Even so, is there any normal bug inside a dungeon? I immediately took out my short sword and threw it in response to the second's words. The sword didn't hit the small insect flying in the air, but everyone focused on me seeing that I was holding a weapon. Novum took out her staff and lifted it. She fired several fireballs and burned the insect. When it was gone, I immediately looked at Shannon. What was the insect just now? Shannon tilted her head while speaking. That wasn't an insect. It was something like a lump of mana imitating an insect. I saw a thin string, so perhaps it was connected to somewhere? Miranda-san came running. Shannon, where was that string connected to? Shannon took a step backward seeing Miranda-san's serious expression while replying. Oh, outside the room. But, it was too far away I didn't know the exact location. The fourth explained. 
an insect made from manna. Now that she mentioned it, I heard there is that kind of thing among the arts for scouting and monitoring. We're being watched. I grasped the jewel. The third replied calmly. Lyle, I understand your feelings, but that's no good. We won't allow you to use the arts. I wondered if I could use the ancestors' arts for this kind of situation, but they wouldn't allow it. There was someone watching us. I wanted to think that it was just someone curious, but I couldn't be careless. Sophia San looked around. Wah, was there something? Arya San was also bewildered. I don't know. Lyle suddenly took out his weapon, so I thought that he was going to quarrel with Shannon Chan again. As expected, even I wouldn't point my weapon at Shannon. Clara San fixed the position of her glasses. Recently, the Kasi of people in this trade getting attacked have been increasing. I never imagined that they will come until this deep. I heard that normally they will attack at the upper levels. Novum turned a serious gaze at me. Lyle Sama, I believe this is an emergency situation. Will you use your arts? I was troubled, but the ancestors absolutely wouldn't allow it. I won't use them. Miranda Sam looked at me expressionlessly. Is that all right? These are people who intentionally come to places with few people like this. Perhaps they're waiting for a chance to target us. Even I wanted to lift the ban of the usage of arts and obtain the enemy information ahead. However, it wasn't allowed. The third said. We won't allow the use of arts until you defeat the floor boss of floor B30. Lyle, try to think about it. Just what were they saying in this condition where we might be targeted? I was irritated dealing with the ancestors and tightly grasped the jewel. I'll think for a bit, so let me be alone. I said that to Novum and Miranda San then got into Porter. The Room of the Round Table Inside the Jewel I put both my hands on the round table and seriously begged in front of the sitting ancestors. Please let me use the arts. I think this isn't the time to talk about tasks or anything. The second answered immediately towards my request. No. Manage it somehow by yourself for something like this. Something like this? We're being targeted by fellow adventurers here. The fourth apathetically pointed out my blunders expressionlessly in response to my plea. You already noticed the possibility of being targeted since from before entering the dungeon, didn't you? We won't let you say that you didn't think that the opponent would act. It's also the leader's role to think about this kind of possibility. It's not admirable to shelve up your own blunder like that. I flinched at the attitude of the ancestors. The third laughed slightly seeing that. It would be better to not talk at all from the beginning if you're going to draw back just from this much. Well, as expected it'll be appalling too to just leave this alone. Let us give you an advice here. After the third said that they would give me some advice, the sixth folded his arms and smiled. But his smile was different from usual. It was more like a scary smile. There's also the possibility that they're just peeking from curiosity. If that's the case, then you don't need to feel bothered at all. But, the problem is in case this is someone searching for prey. Or in the second case that they're targeting Lyle and the others. If it was the former case, then there was a possibility that the other side would change their target now that we noticed them. But, if it was the latter case what would they do if they thought that we noticed them? The seventh talked indifferently. They'll attack forcefully. Or perhaps they'll withdraw and wait for the next change. It's also possible they might try something at the surface, but that won't be amusing. Don't you think so, Lyle? The seventh who hated adventurers didn't seem amused that we were being targeted. Seeing me not saying anything, the third placed his hands behind his neck and tilted his head. These kind of people are persistent. They'll harass other people like it's nothing. Can you allow your comrades to live in fear for the sake of people like that? Of course it wasn't amusing. 
Of course it was unforgivable. The ancestors were pressuring me. The fourth, who I thought to be relatively moderate among the ancestors looked at me with his glasses glinting eerily. Lyle, the situation is already at its final phase. Are you going to defeat them or are you going to get defeated, that's the situation. The fifth was expressionless. A battle isn't something that starts suddenly. It'll be different if someone suddenly picked a fight with you, but there were various things before the situation became like this. Let's see, you saved adventurers who were attacked by fellow adventurers. That was a good thing. But, you failed to notice. You underestimated the fact that there are malicious bunches inside the dungeon. The sixth erased his smile. You also underestimated the fact that you were being followed. Did you think light of it, that there is no way they will go until this far? That's no good. Completely no good. The third swept back his blonde hair with his hand and showed his forehead. Unlike the usual, there was dreadfulness in the third's expression. He was a person who left his name in the history of Bonsium. I often forgot that from my impression of him being usually easygoing, but he was a person who had fought a lot more than someone like me. This is Lyle's blunder. Before you rely on us, you should regret your own worthlessness. Originally, you should increase the number of your comrades and investigate the enemy. Recently, I obtained a lot of money throughout the process of developing Porter. It made me stand out. Starting from Novum, my comrades were all beautiful girls, there were a lot of things that would make us get targeted. The fifth joined his fingers on the round table. It'll only be a waste of time just blaming Lyle. It's important how fast you move in this kind of situation. Also Lyle, can you kill a human? The fifth's gaze didn't look like he was joking. I strongly clenched the cloth on my chest. It wasn't like I forgot but these people were feudal lords people who had fought humans for real. The second said. Well, leave it to us. Something like this is our specialty. The third was showing an expression that was different from usual. In that case I'm curious about the opponent's movement. The fourth's glasses shined ominously. Are they going to change their plan or not now that they've been found out, they have that convenient art, surely until now they rarely got found out. The fifth lowered his gaze. They aren't targeting prey here. You have to teach them that they're chasing after a ferocious beast. I didn't know whether the sixth was delighted or angry. If they were spying just out of curiosity, give them the suitable punishment. If they're picking a fight, they can't complain even if we hit them back. The seventh hit his lips with his clasped hand, but I could feel that he was smiling. Lyle, don't feel any reservation towards these fiends. There isn't any need for that. Let's teach them who they are picking a fight with. Why were they this reliable only at this kind of time? The group of adventurers led by Zalsa was panicked. Underground Dungeons, Floor B-27 In front of the slanted road that was continuing to Floor B-28, Zalsa talked with a rough voice that was different from his usual behavior towards his comrades. They noticed? You asshole, what do you mean by that? His comrade who had a convenient art for scouting and the like crouched while apologizing. Forgive me Zalsa San. One girl noticed and then a knife and flame hit. I couldn't avoid them. I never thought that they would notice that quickly. The adventurer who was kicked became Zalsa's comrade due to his talent. He would create an insect using his art and send it to gather information. He became the eyes and ears of Zalsa's party using that information gathering ability. Because he rarely failed until now, it made Zalsa become unable to suppress his irritation. This time there are also Benerer and that shitty brat. If I bungle up, they'll laugh at me. You should know that this stupid idiot. His comrades held Zalsa back. Calm down, Zalsa. That's right. Even like that, there's someone who have conquered Floor B40. It's not strange that they can do at least this much. 
Now that it's like this, we should contact the other. Zalsa shook free from his comrades and yelled angrily. You didn't notice little things like those guys having convenient arts you said? This idiot! Do you want me to get laughed at by the others like that, huh? If we ask them for help like this, it'll be like I'm saying I'm stupid you know that. Zalsa had also investigated Lyle before this. But, at that time Lyle was forbidden from using arts and kept failing when challenging the dungeon. Zalsa's group was underestimating Lyle's group. Zalsa scratched his head roughly. Change of plans. If it like this, we're gonna attack them. If we don't let them rest and shade their stamina. Zalsa noticed something strange when he spoke until that far. What? What sound is this? The adventurer who was in charge of gathering information stood up from the ground and opened his eyes wide. It's those guys. Zalsa San, they're heading here. At that time, the aforementioned large box that seemed to be called Porter climbed the slanted path from floor B-28 and showed its appearance. Zalsa and the others ran away from there seeing its size and the group scattered. Several people were sent flying by Porter. Porter stopped and a single young man came down. The blue-haired man was one of the targets of Zalsa's group. He was a man so there was no problem to kill him. While everyone was shocked and couldn't stand up from fear, Zalsa pulled out the rapier on his waist and howled. What the hell are you doing? This guy is Lyle. Kill him. Zalsa didn't notice Lyle narrowing his gaze when he saw the rapier. Zalsa's comrades took up their weapons one after another and attacked Lyle. Lyle stood while behind him Porter was parked horizontally to block the passage, blocking the escape path. His comrades attacked Lyle. When Lyle was gone from view, Zalsa made a vulgar smile. With this no one will laugh at me. After this I'm gonna play with the remaining girls. Zalsa was already thinking about what he was going to do with the remaining members inside his mind, but the next moment, he saw his comrades falling on the ground and stiffened with his mouth hanging open. His comrades on the ground were bleeding and moaning. Just now three people attacked at the same time. They were people whose strength was top-ranked among them. It was completely unimaginable that they would be defeated this easily. Lyle had two sabers in his hands. He used two-sword style, furthermore the saber in his right hand was pointed at Zalsa. You're the leader? The others were recoiling seeing their stronger fighters defeated. Zalsa instinctually noticed. Dangerous. This guy is dangerous. Zalsa's comrades couldn't move even though they were facing Lyle alone. If he took the wrong response at this kind of time, one, then two people would run away, then at the end the group would lose cohesion and crumble. The gazes of the surroundings toward Zalsa were saying if it's Zalsa he can win. He had no choice but to fight here. They were a group that targeted fellow adventurers like bandits. Smart heads were necessary to lead those kinds of people, but more than that it was strength that was important. He could throw his weight around and order them because he was stronger than anyone. God damn it. These trashes. He couldn't let his guard down even against his comrades. If he showed even the slightest opening, Zalsa knew that they would bear their fangs towards him. Because he had also did the same until now. Zalsa slowly took a breath. There was the smell of blood. The smell of his comrade's blood. But, that was also a familiar scent for him until now. He had attacked dozens of adventurer parties and acted with complete heinousness to obtain valuables. You shitty brat! I'll kill your comrades especially slowly. I'll torture them till they cry and beg me to stop. He tidied his hair with his hand and took a stance with his rapier. He had a beautiful stance that didn't suit his personality. You're trying too hard to look cool. I'll praise your foolhardiness to attack a group this big by yourself. Lyle didn't move. His blue eyes and the blue jewel hanging from his neck shined. Don't pretend. 
I've listened to the conversations of you guys. There are various things that I want to ask. Zalsa laughed slightly. Isn't it fine even if we have some leeway to enjoy a bit of talk? If not. Using a movement that only looked like he was taking a small step, Zalsa slipped into Lyle's bosom. He was convinced of his victory. Stupid. I'm a famous swordsman even in Aramsas. Zalsa was certainly known as a distinguished swordsman even in Aramsas. That was because he joined a famous dojo, obtained the certificate of his full mastery, and his strength was acknowledged. He chose a rapier because he had the skill to target and stab at the armor's opening. Zalsa liked seeing his opponent in pain after he stabbed them through their protector's opening. However, Lyle deflected Zalsa's stab with his saber. Wah, what dash! Zalsa instantly took distance from Lyle. Cold sweat trickled on his cheek. He can keep up with my speed? Is that his art? Or else a magic tool? He didn't hear that his opponent possessed a magic tool. Besides, since coming to Arumsa's, he heard that Lyle didn't join any dojo. He thought that Lyle could handle swords somewhat, but this was surpassing his imagination. You've good skill to be able to keep up with the thrust just now. How about it, will you become our comrade? Lyle quietly took a stance with his saber. Zalsa gestured exaggeratedly to show his disappointment in order to show to the surroundings that he had the fight in the bag. I thought we would be able to get along though. He stepped forward and launched thrust in succession. Sparks scattered from the clash of the swords of the two. Impatience was growing in Zalsa's heart each time he crossed swords with Lyle. What's with this strength? What the hell? Lyle dodged leisurely even when he fainted or attacked with full strength. Because Zalsa was desperately attacking, to his comrades it looked like he was at an advantage and they were getting excited. However, Zalsa himself was looking at Lyle as though he was facing a monster. None of his attacks worked. The technique he had didn't work. He grabbed the sand he was hiding in his sleeve with his left hand, but before he could throw the sand, it was slashed together with his left hand. Tsu! Pain ran through his left hand, the wound felt hot. He aimed at Lyle's face with the rapier in his right hand, but that was also dodged and he got hit with a headbutt instead. T, this bastard! Lyle not only fought using well-mannered sword technique, Zalsa sensed that he was also well-versed with real combat and his sense of danger was growing stronger. He took a distance and used the back of his right hand to wipe his nose. Blood was flowing from there. Zalsa is losing? Do, don't be stupid. This might be his usual acting. That's right, this is obviously Zalsa Sand's game. Sometimes he would perform a farce where he made the opponent feel convinced that they would win before showing his true strength from there. The reason he was doing something like that was because it was fun seeing the opponent getting cocky. But, right now was different. What the hell? Who the hell said that this guy is just a noble from the sticks? How is this guy this strong at this age, hum? But, Zalsa noticed. Lyle didn't deal the finishing blow on Zalsa even though their difference in strength was this great. When he looked at his defeated comrades, they were still groaning. They were alive. And then, although Lyle was used to fighting, he was really young. Cuckoo, cuckoo. I see. So that's it. Thinking carefully, he was alone here without any of his comrades was also understandable. There was no sign of Lyle's comrades attacking from behind while their eyes were focused on Lyle. In other words, this was. You, never killed someone before, huh? Lyle's expression distorted slightly. Zalsa laughed. There are people like you, huh? Those who hesitate to kill humans even though they had seriously studied to kill monsters. So you're also like that. Lyle stayed silent. Zalsa stopped pretending to be a gentleman and laughed with an ugly face. You guys are really stupid. You can't kill a human even though you will kill a monster? 
Idiot! It doesn't change that it's still killing, what the hell are you doing putting on airs? Well, thanks to that you won't be able to win against me though. Adventurers with strong avoidance of killing humans were mainly young adventurers or honest adventurers. If someone was living as an adventurer, there would also be times when they were recruited onto the battlefield. But, there were adventurers who avoided fighting people. Zalsa couldn't understand them. If they were adventurers, then hunting their fellow adventurers would be more profitable. The fruits of labor from defeating a lot of monsters with hard work and gathering materials could be obtained wholly just from a single battle. They could also sell the equipment and tools of the adventurers they defeated with high price. If they went to a battlefield, they would attack villages and ransack them. Zalsa and his group were no different from bandits. I don't know which spoiled young master of a countryside noble you are, but are you intending to stick to chivalry? Just keep sticking with that lofty spirit and die, stupid ID. Zalsa slashed at Lyle. The place was floor B29. Novum and the others who changed their campsite were waiting while being fully armed. They were staying vigilant thinking that they might get targeted too. Miranda had laid out wires on the entrance. It became a setup to prevent intruders from coming in. Arya who was shouldering her lance sensed approaching footsteps. Someone's coming. This is, Miranda and the others? It looks like they aren't riding Porter. The group that returned to the room was Miranda, Shannon, and then Poyo Poyo who was making a dissatisfied face. Miranda entered the room and then she redid the wires that were taken off. Novum instantly asked when she saw only the three of them return. Where's Lyle Sama? Miranda shook her head. He insisted that we returned. There wasn't even any time to persuade him. He charged ahead alone. Novum glared at Poyo Poyo with an expression that was sterner than usual. You escaped leaving behind your master? Poyo Poyo replied to Novum also with a dissatisfied look. Even I insisted to stay behind. But I was told that these two will be able to return safely without me, I cannot go against orders. Her last words conveyed how she wasn't coming back here willingly. Shannon was looking around in a dither. He, hey, it'll be fine, right? That guy went off alone, but he will return alive, right? Sophia made a face as though she had bitten something bitter hearing that question. Shouldn't we immediately go to assist? The number of the enemy is unmistakably a lot, isn't it? Miranda told her the exact number. From what Shannon and Poyo Poyo detected, there were 25 people. Well, the number in just that place was 25 people. They seem to be flustered, but I wonder how is the situation there right now? The ability of Shannon's mystic eyes was to see mana and manipulate it. Even if someone was far away, she was able to eavesdrop on the conversation using the vibrations of mana. Shannon looked down and clutched her skirt. Those guys, it seems they still have other comrades. Novum tightly gripped her staff and moved to leave the room, but Miranda caught her shoulder. Can you let go? I don't have any time to entertain you. Miranda's expression was unruffled even with Novum glaring at her. Oh, are you unable to believe in your precious Lyle Salma? Novum was in opposition of this plan from the start. She agreed because Lyle said that they would only check the situation and return if the situation seemed difficult. She wasn't told that he would charge ahead by himself. Because he is precious to me, I cannot abandon him. That was why I was opposing this. Why is every time something like this? Arya also moved to act. I'll go ahead to help Lyle. Sophia also shouldered her battle axe. If I manipulate my weight, I can lighten myself and have Arya carry me. Perhaps we'll make it in time if we go with the two of us. Clara slightly looked down. A supporter isn't useful at this kind of time. But I think I'll be able to drive Porter if you bring me. Everyone was saying they would go to where Lyle was, 
but this time Poyo Poyo stood at the entrance and spread open her arms to not let them go. Arya grabbed Poyo Poyo's shoulders, but she didn't even give an inch. Wait! Why are you in the way? Are you really broken in actuality? Poyo Poyo shook her head. This is Chicken Dickwad's order. I won't let anyone pass. Melvum bared her hostility. She readied her wand and prepared to use magic. Sophia held Nelvum back. Nelvum San, wait. Let go. I'm going to Lyle Sama's side. Shannon hugged Miranda in fear. Miranda lifted her up and sat her down on a crate. When she herself also sat down, everyone's gaze gathered on her. It was Arya who yelled at Miranda. Just what are you doing at this kind of time? Miranda showed her composure and smiled at Arya. I'm just waiting quietly. You don't understand from looking? Her attitude seemed to say that. Novum was quietly amassing her anger. Miranda-san, it seems you're lying about wanting to become Lyle Sama's number one. From your attitude, are you thinking that it's all right even if Lyle Sama dies? Miranda objected at the expressionless Nelvum. That's a joke. I'm still aiming for that position even now. I'm only waiting here just as I was told. I'm respecting Lyle's opinion. Sophia criticized Miranda with a strong tone. That's the same as not doing anything. That's no different from abandoning him. Shannon clung at Miranda and looked like she wanted to cry. Everyone softened their tone for a bit seeing that. However, Lyle might be facing danger while they were doing this. Novum glanced at Poyo Poyo. It will take time to destroy this automaton and rush to Lyle Sama's side. But, there is no other. She didn't pay any mind to the string Miranda created from the start, as though they were meaningless. When she was about to take action that she thought to be the best in order to save Lyle, Miranda looked at Novum with a smile. You all, believe in Lyle for a bit. Novum stopped moving hearing those words. What do you want to say? Certainly he is ignorant of the world and there are many times when he is careless. His mental age is also about the same as Shannon I guess? He looks unreliable, so I can understand your feelings of not wanting to leave him alone. Miranda tilted her head and then she spoke provocatively to everyone. But you know, the Lyle that I love will overcome something of this level. Novum turned towards Miranda. Can you take responsibility if something happens to Lyle Sama? That might happen but I think the possibility is low. Poyo Poyo, does Lyle look weak from your perspective? You think he is going to lose against those guys? Poyo Poyo protected the entrance while answering. Chicken Dickwad is weak? That's not true. Even if he was actually weak, this Poyo Poyo has supported him for these several months in meal, sleep, and training. There is no way he is weak. Arya bluntly spoke what was on her mind. It only looked like he was making strange poses and dancing. I thought that perhaps he was doing acrobatics training. Sophia and Clara also nodded. Shannon was feeling plainly shocked that they were thinking like that. Poya Poya let out a deep sigh, and then she lifted her face. So you are looking down on this Poya Poya. Well, it can't be helped though that everyone is judging this cute Poya Poya from her outside appearance. These several months Chicken Dickwad wasn't playing around. Him losing is impossible. Poya Poya was convinced of Lyle's victory. Chapter 64, Foe I painfully vomited because of the ghastly scene. I couldn't resist the welling up discomfort. It was a scene that I had seen several times, but I was still astonished that there would be this much difference just from a change to a human. I put my hand on my chest. My gaze was turned towards a right arm still holding a rapier lying down on the floor. The ancestors harped on calling me pathetic seeing me like this. Not because I vomited. I couldn't kill the enemy. 
The second sounded dissatisfied. Lyle, why do you hesitate? The adventurers who came to attack us had run away. Only those I defeated were still remaining. The man named Zalsa whose hand I severed had also escaped to somewhere. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be troubled like this if I understood the reason. I hesitated the moment I swung down my blade to the opponent and held back slightly. Because of that, the opponent lost his right arm, but... The third was exasperated. Lyle, you have to do it when it's time. You should know that the price for this failure will be high. The ancestors didn't hesitate when they decided to kill a human. Even though their sense of values and era differed from each other, it seemed they had the same conviction only in this. The fourth looked at the surroundings and decided what should be done after this. Burn their belongings, and then there is also other materials put behind at the nearby room. Let's destroy that too. The fifth was composed. The possibility is high that they will ask for help from their comrades rather than going into a frenzy and coming at us in desperation. The sixth sounded bored. It will be easier to destroy them if they do that though. My comrades were all girls. Someone like Shannon was still a child. I didn't want to show her this kind of sight. It seemed that the ancestors also didn't want to show Shannon this sight. The seventh talked with a tone that made me imagine that he was surely smiling. They're running around inside this dungeon where monsters are crawling, without any decent equipment or supplies. Now then, I wonder just how many idiots will be able to reach their comrades. The fourth concluded the opinions. Then, let's go to their supply storage area. Fortunately, it's right nearby. Porter was in the way, so they couldn't take the supply in their escape, let's dispose them all. I wiped my mouth and got into Porter, then moved until the room where Zalsa's gang kept their supplies stored. It was really a big help that Shannon and Poyo Poyo told me various information like the enemy's position and so on. Just like the ancestors said, I didn't need any arts from the start. I arrived at the room without any hitch and discovered the supply. There was also no guard. I pointed my hand toward the piled up supplies. I created a fireball and then fired it toward the supplies. Fire scattered and burned the supplies. The second was calm. Now then, let's go back. It will be stupid if they come attacking while you aren't there and Novum Chan and others got harmed. The seventh sounded really refreshed. If they have the guts to come attacking then we only need to just attack them back. However, Lyle, you have to bring down the enemy's leader. It's important to destroy the head. I returned to Porter and returned to the location of Novum and others without being able to say anything. Zalsa wrapped the right hand that he lost with cloth. He stopped the bleeding and finally returned in order to recover their supplies. But there he fell on his knees. His left hand was holding a sword that he took away from his comrade. In front of him, water and food and then important supplies had been reduced to hash. His other comrades rushed to the supplies and checked, but they only learned that there was almost nothing that was usable. Zalsa looked at the right arm that he lost. That shitty brat, don't fuck with me ee. Rage was welling up. He lost the majority of his comrades. It was especially painful that his strong comrades were gone. There were only small fries and baggage carriers who were remaining. Even if they had the funds to buy supplies and equipments to replace what they lost, it wouldn't be that easy to replace the comrades that were lost. In addition, he lost his dominant arm. From here on it would take several years to form a party in the same scale like before if he did it in a normal way. No, it wouldn't be strange even if it took ten years. You, you made this me angry. I'm absolutely not gonna forgive you bastard. The blood rose to his head, but Zalsa thought about from here on. It's impossible to escape from the dungeon with just us. I can only ask Binur to pick us up. If we deal with that noble brat Ludhor, we'll have some surplus money. 
I'll use prosthetics for my right arm, get stronger again and then next time I'll kill that shitty brat for sure. When he thought until that far, there was a sound of a group approaching the room. Monsters at this kind of time? He held his weapon and took a stance, but he found the figure of Benur there shouldering his hammer. Benur! Yo, mate! Zalsa found hope in this situation and smiled. Benur approached. Your comrades came until the floor we were at. When we came running here, we found you in a really terrible situation like this, huh, Zalsa? Who the hell do you think will have to clean up after you? Zalsa wanted to retort back at Benur's high-handed attitude, but right now his position was overwhelmingly weaker. My bad, Benur. That shitty brat is unexpectedly strong. I don't want to hear any excuse. Benur held up the hammer he shouldered. B. Benur? Zalsa's face cramped. Benur spoke to Zalsa's comrades that were watching from the surroundings. You guys, decide whether to die here or to follow me. Those who won't obey. Zalsa tried to run away, but he was wounded and also had no stamina left. Without even being able to run away from Benur's hammer, his head was crushed. You'll end like this. Everyone swore to follow Benur. Benur stroked his beard. Zalsa, I've hated you since a long time ago. I wanted to vomit seeing your fake gentleman act. Benur counted Zalsa's remaining comrades. Only eight people, huh? Well, the monsters must have cleaned up the rest, no use caring about it. You guys, from today, I'm your leader. Benur whose number of underlings was increased stroke his beard and thought about from here on. Now then, Zalsa is a shitty bastard, but his strength is the real thing. For someone to defeat him, this is troublesome. The careful Benur also took into consideration about withdrawing for a moment. He thought to report to their client Ludhor for now. I met up with Novum and the others. They were worried whether I was wounded. Lyle Sama, are you injured? Please take off your clothes right away. The worried Novum came to strip off my clothes. I didn't even have any spirit to resist, but right now I wanted to be just left alone. I, I'm fine. I'm fine as you can see. No. What are you going to do if the enemy used poison? I'll check right away. Poyo Poyo was exasperated. I don't find any external wounds on Chicken Dickwad. However, Novum ignored her and moved to check my body. Arya San and Sophia San were scolding me. You idiot! Why did you go fight by yourself? Do you not believe us? I didn't know how to answer that, but then Novum glared at the two of them. Please stay quiet for now. The two were overwhelmed by Novum and closed their mouths. Miranda San then came bringing a wet towel for me. Isn't it better to let him rest for now? Besides, your usual composure cannot be seen you know Novum. Novum's hand stopped. From inside the jewel, unreliable voices that were unlike before came. I wish Miranda Chan will hold back a bit. H.M., is this what they called a fight between women? Why is my stomach getting hurt? We're just a memory, right? Even though I have no body my stomach is. I think this is because Novum is too fussy. I wish you guys won't talk as though everything is Mylia's great-granddaughter's fault. Well, it will be better for Lyle to rest for now. He is also tired after all. I didn't feel tired physically. But, it was hard for my mind. Novum, I'm not injured, so it's fine. I want to rest for now. Novum looked at my face and felt down. Is that so? What about the meal? Impossible. I don't want to eat. I would just vomit even if I ate. Just what in the world was this revolting feeling? Novum really looked worried for me. She stayed at my side until I headed to bed.
the group that targeted Lyle. Ludhor was sitting on the supplies that were piled up. He was looking down on trembling adventurers like they were trash. These trashes. Who do you think you're talking to? The corpses of Benur and several of his comrades were lying down ahead of his gaze. The reason other adventurers were shaking was because Ludhor used magic. In the first place a noble meant a magician, not just in the Bonsium kingdom but also in other countries. They obtained authority because they possessed the rare power that was magic. The thing called magic produced a clear difference of strength between those who had it and those who hadn't. The corpses of Benur and the others were scorched. Even though they had more battle experience and strength than Ludhor, they were killed too quickly in front of magic. Their comrades who saw that were trembling. This kind of real deal magician also existed among the students attending the academy. Ludhor's friend called to him. What are we going to do with the rest? Ludhor didn't treat his friends like a trash or felt irritated to him because he was a fellow noble and magician. It'll be good to erase them all here, but it'll also be good to forgive them if they work for me. It's the fact that I want pawns I can use in Arumsas. His other friend also agreed. Ah, good idea. It's inconvenient relying solely on our houses, after all. It's also interesting to hire the surviving bunches. You guys, work like your life depends on it. Ludhor and his friends roared with laughter. Near them there were armed knights. They were skilled fighters that the houses of Ludhor and his friends sent here. But, Ludhor recalled the report from the adventurers. Even so, the adventurers who I heard are strong are just small fries. They got done in by a mere countryside noble. His friends shrugged. You expect too much from adventurers. More importantly what now? Are we going to wait here to attack them? Lyle and the others would surely pass through this place where they were waiting. It would be the easiest to aim at that time. Ludhor thought for a bit. Let's see. If possible I want to watch an interesting show. Ludhor looked down at the trembling adventurers while smiling. The two leaders of the malicious adventurers had died and at the end only Ludhor, who was a noble, remained. Before they launched attacks at Lyle's group, the adventurers were told to kill each other. Ludhor and others looked even more sinister than the monsters crawling inside the underground dungeon. The night passed. Poya Poya, who was standing guard the whole night, hit a frying pan with a ladle to wake up everyone. It's morning. Please wake up. H.M., today the weather of the labyrinth is also really good. The weather cannot be seen at all though. I looked at Poya Poya, whose tension was high right from the morning and took the book that I used as a pillow. It was a book about names. I immediately put it inside my luggage and yawned. My feeling after waking up was the worst. I just felt bad. I didn't understand whether I was sleeping or awake. The feeling of my mind being turned around and the sensation of cutting human yesterday hadn't vanished. I hugged myself. It was then Novum approached. Lyle Sama, good morning. Shall I wipe your body? When I noticed I had been sweating a lot while sleeping, yeah, please do. Usually the ancestors inside the jewel would be complaining annoyingly right now, but they were silent. Normally they would say things like how can you make Novum Chan do something like this, but today they were silent from the morning. Then, Miranda San came to me bringing a bucket. Lyle, I have hot water prepared. I will wipe your body for you. It felt like she was stressing her tone when she said I, but the me right now only nodded. I didn't feel good from the morning. Novum looked at Miranda and she seemed like she would say something, but she stood up and smiled at me. Then, I will start the breakfast preparation. I said yeah to the back of Novum who was leaving, then Miranda San started wiping my body. With a small voice. I woke up Shannon and asked her to check the surroundings but it looks like there are no signs of people. 
It seemed she woke earlier than me and checked the area. When I looked at Shannon, she looked sleepy. I've troubled you. Miranda San laughed. It's no trouble. You've worked hard yesterday, and? Miranda San urged me to talk. She must be asking for the information of the group that was thinking to attack us. They're a party that is used to attacking adventurers. It looks like they still have other comrades, but they weren't on floor B-27, so I think they were at a higher floor. I burned their supplies, so those who escaped might be joining up with their comrades. Miranda San nodded several times. It'll be good if they obediently withdraw. They'll also need water and food for the people they rescued, so I think they will withdraw. If the number of people increased, the amount of food and water consumed would also increase by that much. The more people they saved, the more they would constrict their own neck. It seemed they were targeting us. I collected their guild cards, so let's check it out when returning to the surface. Our constrained living might continue for a while though. Miranda San smiled. It can't be helped. We'll endure that if we can be safe with that. More importantly Lyle, about the next floor boss, can you leave it to me? Miranda San said that and snuggled closer to me. She might have wiped herself, I smell a faint scent of soap. Miranda-chan, how should I say it, she's properly on the attack isn't she? Rather than calling her proactive, he must want to say that she was aggressive. The third said something like that. Clara San and Shannon were inside Porter. The others got down and held up metal board. Poyo Poyo created the shields to defend against the light beam according to Poyo Poyo it was called a laser. Sophia San held the shield and said. Somehow it feels unreliable. It was created thinly to lighten the weight. It would dent if it was hit normally. It seemed that it was painted with some kind of paint that would block the laser that was fired by the cylinder object that was the floor boss. Poyo Poyo carried two shields. What a rude person. In the first place against that cylinder pillar even a thick one will be pointless. The cylinder pillar that was as wide as two adults and three meters tall had a trait of being extremely heavy. Such heavy boss that was called a cylinder pillar was floating unsteadily. Even adults would be crushed if they got tackled by it. The shield would be useful enough as long as it blocked the laser that was fired from its single eye. Arya-san held a shield and looked at Miranda-san. You will really do it alone? Miranda-san showed the knives and tools hanging on her waist. It'll be enough with just these. Protect me if something happens okay, Lyle? Novum looked with cold eyes at Miranda-san, who was making an appeal at just me. The second muttered with a subdued tone. Somehow Novum-chan feels scary since yesterday. The second, the third, and the fourth were kind to Novum, but the fifth and the rest were kind to Miranda-san and Shannon. Even though normally the fifth would be disinterested, today only he seemed to be concerned about various things. Isn't Miranda better than Novum? Novum is spoiling Lyle too much. The third couldn't just ignore that and objected. Novum Chan who sold her dowry and devoted herself to Lyle isn't worthy for him? Now I cannot just let that go. The opinions split inside the jewel and a quarrel started, but I ignored them and talked to Miranda-san. Please don't force yourself too much. Miranda-san smiled and replied. Just watch. It's not just Arya and the others who have worked hard. Floor B30 We were standing by in front of the boss room and entered inside all at once. We who were carrying shields went ahead. Miranda-san and Porter were following from behind. Light was emitted from the single eye of the cylinder pillar. Sophia-san blocked it. The, the light the laser really got stopped. The shield certainly had fulfilled its role. The laser that was fired from the boss got stopped. Miranda-san rushed out from behind Sophia-san and threw something towards the boss. Arya-san ran in order to cover Miranda-san. Clay? 
What's the use of something like that? It was a rectangular clay the size of a palm. Its shape changed when hitting the boss and stuck on its surface. No, that's. Novum seemed to notice and she was about to say something, but Miranda San explained first. That's not just a clay. If I do this, be careful to the light and sound. Miranda San threw a knife that stabbed into the clay, sticking on the boss. Right after that, the clay shined and exploded. Heh. When I noticed, the boss was rotating midair while crashing on the wall. When it fell on the floor, Miranda San threw a clay block once more. Oh, how tough. Just one won't be enough as expected. Its weak point is, here perhaps. She said that and threw a clay block on the boss's eye. Then she threw a knife again at it. When the clay was stabbed, it emitted light and at the same time the smoking boss was blown away. The explosive sound echoed inside the room. It hurt the ears. While I was feeling astonished at the sound resounding to my body, the boss stopped moving. Poyo Poyo approached the boss. It stopped functioning. Miranda San turned towards us. This is the second time so it's easy. I thought that it would be simple to defeat it if I do this, still it's nice that it went well. The sixth was dumbfounded. Do, don't tell me she created a bomb? The seventh was fidgety. What power? Besides, that clay. In that shape it's easy to carry it around. It cannot be compared with a toy like Burst Arrow. The seventh who loved explosives was excited and full of interest towards the clay. I approached Miranda-san. Don't tell me, Miranda-san is walking around bringing a lot of that clay? I, it won't explode or anything right. Miranda-san guessed my worry and showed to me her special knife. I made it so the explosion will occur when it's combined with this knife. Well, it's troublesome because it's handmade so I can't prepare a lot. It seems she made the explosives by herself. Thinking back, I met horrible experience because of this person's explosives. The seventh's excitement wouldn't stop. She made it herself. Magnificent. As expected from the great-granddaughter of Ant. The sixth sounded inarticulate. Perhaps he had complicated feelings. Oh, oi. Stop it. You make it sound like Millie I.A. was a bombing maniac. Don't confuse her with you. His remark made it sound like the seventh was a bombing maniac, but I looked at the cylinder pillar that was a floor boss smoking inside the room. Clara San came down from the porter. Then I'll collect the magic stone and materials. Shannon also came down. Hesitantly, she touched the cylinder pillar that Miranda Sand defeated. This is a strange creature. It's like it's not alive. Certainly the inside wasn't biological, but mechanical. It seemed that it only appeared in Arumsis's dungeon, but still what a mysterious floor boss. With this I can use arts. Was it all right for it to be this easy? I recalled everything until now and thought that it was unexpectedly anticlimactic. Suddenly Poyo Poyo pushed me hard. You, what are you doing so suddenly? The sight I saw when I turned around after getting pushed away was the sight of Poyo Poyo with her back turned on me getting stabbed by arrows one after another. Right away flames burst out from the spots that were stabbed by the arrows, and then ice enveloped Poyo Poyo's body and it cracked. Wind and electricity blew violently, in addition magic were fired to attack me one after another. Poyo Poyo became my shield and blocked all of that. Her usual screwing around figure wasn't there, she ignored me even when I told her to get away and stood before me. When the incessant attacks of magic arrows and magic stopped, it became silent like it was a dream. My comrades turned their gazes toward the entrance, but I couldn't tear off my gaze from Poyo Poyo's back. Boy, Poyo Poyo! I ran towards Poyo Poyo. There Poyo Poyo was standing with both her hands protecting her head. Yo, you, why? 
Her left arm from her elbow was gone. Small electricity was crackling from her body, red liquid was flowing from her stomach, and things with polished metallic color could be seen. She was mostly battered except the head that she protected. Her prided twin tail was also scorched and messed up. Her maid uniform that she said was the only outfit she needed was also a mere shadow of its former self. Poyo Poyo's skin was the same color like a human. The liquid flowing from her body was also red, but her inner structure was undoubtedly mechanical. She was an automaton. If she was a human, it wouldn't be strange if she died instantly in this state. You why did you protect me? Hearing my words, Poyo Poyo's red eyes were flickering while she totteringly answered. What are you saying? Chicken Dickwad is my Goshijin Sama. I'll protect you at the risk of my life. After all, I'm a maid. Poyo Poyo said that and became unable to stand. She fell on her knees. I caught her body and hugged her close. At that time, a man appeared while making applause. A love between an automaton and a human, huh? Haha, ha, I've seen something good. This is the funniest thing I've seen recently. Besides the smiling man, there were two men of similar age. There were seven guards in black clothes protecting them. And then behind them, several men dressed like adventurers were standing to block the entrance. I was familiar with several people among them. The bandits who tried to attack us. The guards in black were clearly moving differently from the adventurers. They must be the elites. Miranda-san, who held her weapon in ready, watched sharply. Ludhor, why are you here? Seeing that he was Miranda-san's acquaintance, he must be an academy student or a noble or perhaps both. I hugged Poyo Poyo, who was unable to move. The man called Ludhor looked at Miranda-san and made an ugly smile. Miranda, I'm really sad. If only you were a bit smarter, it would be only natural that you would choose me. Both of us are fellow capital nobles raised in the royal capital. Both of us aren't strangers to each other. Miranda Sand moved her gaze and counted the enemy's number. Next, she slightly moved to protect Shannon. Clara Sand guessed that and stood in front of Shannon. Arya Sand stepped forward to protect the two of them. The surrounding adventurers were holding weapons while looking scared. Around the young man who seemed to be a noble, a lot of arrows magic arrows were floating. All the arrowheads were pointed at me. I gritted my teeth. I recalled the words of the ancestors. The price that the third mentioned, I couldn't help but feel that it wasn't directed at me, but my comrades. Why are you targeting us? Ludhor seemed to be lightly irritated at my words. He was scowling. Shut up you countryside, noble. Originally, I should be the one to marry Miranda. But she got taken away by a countryside noble who was chased away from his house. Do you understand my feelings? It's a really miserable feeling. Miranda-san instantly denied him. I don't have any relationship with him. At best, we only talked several times in the academy. Our houses have a bit of a relationship with each other, but there isn't any talk of marriage. The students around Ludhor, who seemed to be his friends, laughed. Ludhor, that's what she said, you know? What a really naive young lady. Even though everything will be all right if you just obediently marry Ludhor. What were these guys saying? Could it be they were doing something like this from unjustified resentment? In that case, I. My hand that was holding Poyo Poyo tensed. The fifth's voice came from inside the jewel. Lyle, you don't need to pay them any attention. This kind of fellow is a type that is raised in misunderstandings by their house. Inside their mind the marriage is a done deal, that's all there is to it. Although, it looks like that kind of idiot was born having power. Perhaps because they could use magic, Ludhor and his friends didn't carry weapons. One of them had a lot of arrows floating around him. It must be an art. 
Ludhor looked at Miranda-san and clicked his tongue. Getting cocky just because I'm acting kind. Even though I was considering to keep you if you became my woman even if you're a second hand. Arya-san couldn't hold back and yelled. You guys are really shameless since just now looking down at us. Doing something like this because you want Miranda, you guys are the worst as men. Ludhor and his two friends were laughing even after hearing those words. Only the seven men in black clothes were silent. They didn't even say a word since the beginning. You're the stupid one. Wah, what? I'm not stupid. Although Arya-san refuted right away, the second was exasperated because she was only parroting back the other's words. You're stupid because you're objecting like that. Ludhor made a vulgar smile and turned his gaze to Porter. Our target is that thing. Porter is it? Miranda is just an extra. You all, it looks like you don't understand what it is that you've created, huh? I was thinking to rush out any time. These guys kept talking arrogantly. A carriage that doesn't need a horse. You can find anyone who wants it anywhere. If I monopolize Porter, then a lot of money will come even if I don't do anything. It's not like I need any woman. The draw of the Viscount House of Sercury is just a bit attractive though. Sophia San sent a glance at Porter. Your aim from the start isn't us but Porter you said? Ludhor spoke as though to spit out. Who the hell needs woman like you all? If I have money then I can obtain however many beautiful girls I like. I'm not going to get aroused by women who became adventurers and turned into muscle demons. The girls were nothing but extra, his aim was Porter. The fourth muttered. Hum, he's got good eyes. Sophia San was shaking. Making fun of us, in the first place, you destroyed Poyo Poyo San just because of that. The three started cackling hearing the name Poyo Poyo. Poyo Poyo, she said. That name doesn't have the slightest sense. No, it has. We should praise the sense that is hurting our stomach so much like this. I got ridiculed. It made me think, if only I gave a more proper name. While the three were laughing, I slowly laid down Poyo Poyo on the floor. I gently placed her down so that she wouldn't be even more broken than this. Then Ludhor opened his mouth. No. For the time being if we have the actual thing then we can just disassemble it later and investigate it, but torturing you all for information will also be interesting. It will be funny watching you scums crying and begging for your life. I really couldn't think of them as fellow humans. Or perhaps was this the standard for the nobles of the Bonsium Kingdom? I tightly gripped my saber's handle. Poyo Poyo looked at me. Chicken Dickwad. No, Goshijin Sama. I'm glad to have met you. Don't talk anymore. I'll bring you to Damien's lab right away. I, at the era when I was created, I had never opened my eyes, or got activated. Wait for a bit. After everything is over, we'll immediately head to the surface. I don't know if you have any stamina left but, hold out until then. I said that while ignoring her words that I couldn't bear to listen to. Ludhor seemed to be displeased by that and clicked his tongue. You're still playing with dolls even now, huh? Aren't you getting a bit too cocky? The jewel heated up slightly. I was seething with anger. If it was now I got the feeling I could steal myself. I stood up and turned my gaze to Ludhoror rather to all of them. The spacious floor of the boss room had a round shape. Ludhor and the others appeared from the entrance to floor B-29. The adventurers were fanning out to block the path. However, the positioning of the adventurers was half-baked. Perhaps to them the likes of adventurers were just disposable pawns. It looked like they only thought of the scared adventurers as their meat shields. I counted the enemy's number. Boy, you listening? I ignored Ludhor who twisted his face and counted more than forty enemies. 
the three who could use magic and arts and the seven guards in black clothes were the ones who I should be on guard against. The second's art made the whole room to be a territory that I could sense. It has been several months since the last time. Use them well. The third's art started meddling with the enemies even if only faintly. The task was until you defeated the floor boss. From here, Lyle can do as you like. The fourth's art raised my moving speed. Good grief. It would be better if they went with full strength right from the start. Instead, they kept prattling on in front of an enemy. The fifth's art taught me of the surrounding terrain. They picked a good timing for attacking, and yet why did they choose to let go of the advantage by themselves? I can't understand it. The sixth's art notified me of the number of enemies that were holding hostility against me. Many were only following Ludhor but didn't really want to fight. Let's teach reality to these idiot capital nobles, Lyle. Right now, I didn't use the seventh's art. It's really annoying but, it's no good if you kill the enemy. I rolled the jewel with my fingers. It was the signal when I was saying no. The fifth replied. It's not like we're telling you that it's bad to kill humans at this point. Try looking behind you. When I turned my focus behind using the second's art, Shannon who was being protected by Clara San was shaking. She was scared at this situation and seeing Puyo Puyo's state. You must want to cut them down right now but, Shannon will be traumatized like that. That's no good. For your own sake to don't kill. I wanted to refuse, but Shannon was near her limit even at the current situation. The ancestors were concerned of Shannon getting traumatized if she witnessed people killing each other. Conversely speaking, there was no other reason to let these guys live except that. I tightly grasped the jewel that I toyed with my fingers, then it seemed Ludhor who was red-faced also reached his limit. Enough, tear off that guy's hands and legs. Ludhor's friends fired the magic arrows floating around him one after another. The arrows accurately headed toward my limbs, so they were really easy to sense. Miranda-san moved to cover me, but I moved faster than that and stepped forward. Miranda-san who was going to cover me was surprised seeing my back. Novum raised her wand, and Arya-san was also moving. Sophia-san was lifting up her battle axe. I didn't only use my sight and hearing information was flowing in one after another through arts. It's nostalgic to feel this. I recalled the sensation after a few months of not using the arts while putting my left hand forward. If the enemies were also magicians, then I would also use magic. A barrier was created with mana centered on my left hand a shield was deployed. The magic arrows and magic hit it and caused explosion on its surface. The seventh talked to me. Battle between magicians will be flashy. But, as long as there isn't a great difference in strength, it will only be a flashy exchange of attacks. The opponent will also deploy a shield after all. It must be unreasonable from the perspective of the commoner. Only magicians possessed powerful magic and the method to defend against it. Seeing their prided art and magic blocked, Ludhor and his friends kick the behind of the adventurers at the front. Go fight these small fries! The adventurers rushed towards me in panic. The sixth seemed excited. In the end, it will become a sword fight like this. After all this is the best way to kill a magician. If there was no difference in strength between the magicians, at the end the battle would be decided with close quarter combat. In that case there was no problem. After all, I had the first's art. It was a simple and clear art to strengthen the body. It increased my physical ability. One adventurer came with a slash, so I grabbed his arm and threw him towards Ludhor and his friends. The black-clothed group that protected the three of them blocked the adventurer's body. These guys were the most troublesome factor. It was troublesome that I couldn't kill them. I dodged the attack of the black-clothed man who came at me, pounded my fist on his face and sent him flying. Several adventurers got hit with his body and fell. 
the nearby adventurer swung down a rod that had an iron ball attached on it. I caught it with my left hand. H-I-H. -I, I put strength into my left hand and snatched the weapon from the adventurer whose face was twitching. You, how many fellow adventurers you've killed until now? When I asked that, the man suddenly began to look around. The effect of the third's art, mind, was to meddle with the opponent's mind. The scared adventurer was seeing the ghosts of the adventurers he had killed until now. And, no. I was only doing my order. That's why, it wasn't my fall. He was noisy, so I shut him up with a kick to the stomach. I threw the iron ball I took towards another adventurer. The third was laughing. Oh, they can't bring down Lyle, so the other adventurers are starting to hesitate. Just as he said, the other adventurers who were some distance away from Ludhor's group were running away from the passage. Wah, what the hell? No, Marie. Don't come. Don't come. Ludhor yelled. You guys, I'll kill you all if you run. The enemy's group was in chaos. Miranda San used her art to fire strings towards the group in black clothes approaching me and captured them. The sticky strings wrapped two people and made them unable to move. Next, Miranda San threw knives that stabbed the thigh of Ludhor's two friends. H I H. It hurt. It hurt Dash. The blood. Blood is flowing. The two made pathetic voices. When I noticed, Arya San and Sophia San were also moving. Arya San landed a hard thrust with the butt of her spear to the stomach of the black clothed men, while Sophia San used the flat side of her battle axe to hit them flying. Even when the remaining black clothed men moved to surround Arya San and Sophia San, Sophia San grabbed a nearby adventurer. She swung around the adventurer who she lightened using her art, and then she threw him to the black clothed group. It seemed the adventurer's weight returned to normal the moment she threw him, but the black clothed group dodged the thrown adventurer. The adventurer hit another adventurer and fell on the floor before rolling around for quite a distance. Arya San assaulted when the movement of the black clothed group was in disarray. She reaped their consciousness by hitting them with her spear. The two of them weren't outdone facing against the adventurers and the black clothed group who moved skillfully. Novum was giving support from behind. Miranda San was also restraining the adventurers one after another. Now there was nobody around Ludhor. You're the only one remaining. Ludhor, who was standing rooted on the spot, turned his gaze around in panic. And then he caught sight of the shivering Shannon. His hand turned towards Shannon, but I didn't move. Miranda San directed killing intent towards Ludhor. I lifted my hand to ask her to wait. Miranda San twitched in reaction and stopped moving. Don't you dare acting leisurely bastard. Electricity was fired from Ludhor's hand. The electric attack that was fired straight towards Shannon and Clara was blocked by a shield and didn't reach the two of them. Ludhor's friends were groaning on the floor. The black clothed group was defeated. The adventurers had run away. It was only Ludhor who was left standing in place. Even the magic he was proud of was blocked by Novum, who was standing at the rear. Novum opened her mouth with a staff in her hand. Something that weak won't be able to slip past my barrier. When the situation was overturned, Miranda San bound the defeated group using strings that she created with her art. I put my saber into its sheath in front of Ludhor. I, I was wrong. We, we're both nobles. Look, there are various things, right? Lee, like getting along. Ludhor started buttering us up. It was irritating listening to him. I slowly approached him. Each time I took a step forward, Ludhor's tone would become even more overfamiliar. I, if it's money, I'll give it to you. How much do you want? I'll give you an amount that a countryside noble has never even seen. That's why, okay? I smiled. I don't need any. 
I can earn money myself after all. Ludhor's gaze wandered around. And then he saw my comrades behind and seemed to think of something. Then I'll prepare woman. I'll prepare whatever woman you like. I don't need that. I only had one wish. Ludhor's face turned into despair. M, my house won't stay quiet if you kill me. My house is. I stood in front of Ludhor and grabbed his annoying mouth with my hand. Hey, can you shut up? Right now I'm really in a bad mood. You understand the reason even without me saying it right? Ludhor pointed his hand towards my face to fire a magic. My empty hand grabbed his arm and then I crushed it. The sound of flesh and bone being crushed was conveyed to me through the body. Ludhor writhed and tried to scream, but he couldn't make any voice with his mouth blocked. Tears pulled in his eyes and he struggled violently. I smelled ammonia. To be honest it will be nice to kill you here. I want to do that. But, I'm stopped from doing that. The inside of the jewel was quiet. I got the feeling they were observing my action. Come to think of it, you said something really interesting. I let go of him and pushed him away. He fell on his butt and begged for his life while crying. Please forgive me. The truth is I just planned to make a bit of a threat. I, it's true. But, those guys, the adventurers got carried away. He started saying that it was other people who were bad. It was a lie in order to survive here. I grabbed Ledhor's hair and pushed his face on the floor. Torture, was it? There are also other things. What did you say you're going to do to my comrades? Ludhor was crying and dripping snot from the pain in his arm and fear. Please forgive me. I didn't say it, it was those guys who said it. Ludhor's betrayal caused his two friends who couldn't move to protest. You're selling us out, huh? It was you who said that you got an idea of an amusing game. Then Miranda San kicked the face of one person and stepped on the head of the other one. Can you stay silent? Do you understand the meaning of targeting me targeting Shannon? Miranda San's house was a Viscount house in the capital. It was a house with history and an official post. Briefly speaking, these guys who were attempting to murder a daughter of such a house and hid the evidence inside a dungeon would only find destruction waiting for them even if they escaped to the surface. I strongly grabbed Ludhor's hair. Several of his hairs were uprooted but I paid it no mind. Hear that, what is the truth? You will tell me everything, won't you? The third's art was gradually showing effect. Ludhor also stopped crying from pain, and then the focus of his eyes was gone. And then he answered my question. I thought I'd be able to make money. There was also rumors of Miranda inviting a man into her house, I was irritated so I wanted to hurt her and take away Porter. His motive was simplistic. He could be praised for noticing Porter's value, but it was unforgivable that he attacked us. Is there anyone who give you guys instructions? None. When I contacted my house, they sent me money. After my house investigated I received a letter that told me to send them the actual thing. I was exasperated. Did they also consider about getting into conflict with the Sirkri house? Ludhor answered indifferently. It will be troublesome if I mentioned the name Sirkri, so I hid it from my house. I thought there would be no problem if I thoroughly break Miranda so that she cannot go against me. The seventh spoke briefly. Scum. I asked one more thing. What did you plan to do with Shannon? The blind girl is unnecessary so, I plan to leave her in the dungeon. Miranda San's gaze turned stern. I let go of Ludhor and ordered him to stand. And then when I clapped my hand, Ludhor got liberated from mind. His face twisted from pain and he was about to sit down on the spot. I grabbed his collar. I think I'll be forgiven if I do this much. Heh? My face hit Ludhor's stupid face. 
my fist that sunk into his face broke Ludhor's front teeth and crushed his nose. Ludhor was sent flying and then tumbled on the floor while screaming something, but Miranda-san immediately bound him. I looked at my fist with an anger that still hadn't abetted. Attacking us with that kind of reason. I was furious at Ludhor who tried to kill us just because he wanted money and felt angry. Novum spoke to me. Lyle Sama, Puyo Puyo San, she. When I turned around, Novum was putting a blanket on Puyo Puyo on the floor. I rushed to them and sat down to peer into Puyo Puyo's face. Goshijin Sama, there's no more time. Before that can I ask you, just one thing? I talked to her while holding back from crying. Idiot. I'll bring you right away to Damien's place. And then you'll be back to normal. I didn't know whether Damien would really be able to fix an automaton. But, I could only say that, I could only hold on hope. Tears came out. Poya Poya wiped my tears with a halting movement using her remaining hand. I won't make it. Besides, with Professor Damien's skill, before that, just one thing, actually, I liked, the name Poya Poyo. I grabbed Poya Poyo's hand. I'm sorry. Actually, I've been thinking of a proper name. But, I couldn't say it, I don't want to be told again that the name is bad. Actually, I've been thinking of a name all this time. But, I couldn't say it until now. Poyo Poyo smiled. Then, can I, hear that name? I've, been waiting, all this time. The flickering light in Poyo Poyo's eyes, was gradually weakening. What's with that? Don't talk like it's a farewell. Arya-san was silently looking down. Sophia-san was wiping her eyes. Clara-san was looking at Poyo Poyo wordlessly. Novum sat near me and closed her eyes. During that time, Miranda-san was watching over the enemies that were tied up. It seemed she was making time so I could focus on Poyo Poyo. Poyo Poyo's voice was gradually getting harder to listen to. There is, no time. That's why, before that. I wiped my tears. And then I spoke Poyo Poyo's name that I had been thinking of all this time. Monica it's Monica. I've been thinking about it all this time but, I think this name is good. Poyo Poyo looked happy. M-O, N-I, Ka, it's a, good, name, isn't it? I, am, hap, P-Y. I talked to Monica who slowly closed her eyes. I felt that strength suddenly left her body. Shannon shook her head. Lies. This is lies. Impossible. How, this is impossible. Clarissan hugged the shocked Shannon and soothed her. Shannon San, it's fine already. We should let her sleep. Poya Poyo San Monica San, she protected Lyle San. Wrong. You're wrong. I could hear their voices, but I was assaulted with the feeling of lethargy from losing Monica. If, if only I was more dependable. Novum, talk to me kindly. Lyle Sama, please don't blame yourself too much. I'm, if I was more, properly. After losing her, I realized, for the first time, just how much she had done for me until now. Even though she insulted me as chicken dickwad, she prioritized me more than anything. If only I was kinder to her to Monica. The inside of the jewel was getting noisy. Oh, oi. Just now was there something sucked out? Something was abruptly sucked out. What could have happened just now? Oi, isn't the flow of mana directed towards her? To Poya Poyo? No, she is Monica right now, huh? Ah. The seventh seemed to remember something. He said something that Monica previously said. She said it, didn't she? There is a line of mana between her and Lyle, and she is obtaining energy from there. At that time, if I remember right, she also said something about repair. I had familiarity with this sensation of strength leaving me. 
when my mana was still little in capacity, my mana got taken away because of the ancestors making a ruckus inside the jewel. This sensation was familiar with that time. No, my mana was being sucked even more than that. Novum seemed to notice the abnormality. Lyle Sama? Air, is your complexion gradually worsening? A, are you all right? I looked at Monica. Monica's eyes were closed looking like she was sleeping peacefully it was only her mouth that was moving. Body repair finished. Carrying out optimization of data and body. Starting the restart. Arya-san was surprised hearing her saying that with a monotone voice. She talked. She and Sophia-san stiffened in a strange pose from the surprise. Ko, could it be she is coming back to life? I looked at Monica. I couldn't put strength into my body anymore. Yo, you, could it be? When Monica opened her eyes, she looked at my face and smiled. Restart finished. Switching to normal mode from here. She said that and lifted her upper body and kissed me. And then, she leaped and somersaulted midair before landing on the floor and pinched her skirt with elegant movement. She bent her knees and lowered her head. The blanket fluttered airily. This Monica, formerly Poyo Poyo, from here on allow me the privilege to take care of Chicken Dickwad forever at his side. It was a beautiful bow. She also caught the falling blanket and quickly folded it. Yo, you, did you, trick me? My mouth didn't move well. My sight was wavering. Surely it was wavering along with my body. Novum caught me and supported me. Lyle Sama. Do, don't tell me that you sucked Lyle Sama's mana. Monica twisted her body cutely. I have no memory of speaking even once that it's a farewell. Even so, I didn't know that Chicken Dickwad was thinking hard of a name for my sake. I anxiously thought that perhaps he actually forget to think of any name, but as expected Chicken Dickwad is the best Goshijin Sama. Her scorched and messed up twin tail had been fixed when I noticed. Her hair was smooth and looking soft and shiny. Her red made uniform also looked like new. She also had complete hands and legs. There wasn't any wound that could be seen on her. No, in the first place, could automaton get injured? Would it be better to call it damage? My thought couldn't focus so much that I was thinking of such trivial matter. No way. After I muttered that as my last, I entrusted my body to Novum and let go of my consciousness. Lyle Samaea. Chicken Dickwad. I could hear Novum and Monica's voices, but I couldn't move anymore. I was really all sorts of tired. Chapter 65 Cleaning Up When Lyle fainted, Novum stood up. She lifted up Lyle with her arms to lay him down inside Porter. Monica was complaining to her. Taking care of Chicken Dickwad is my job. Whose fault do you think it is that Lyle Sama fainted? Novum stared coldly, in response Monica didn't draw back even for a single step. That's why I'll take care of him. See, there is no problem at all. The two of them were returning to Porter while arguing. Miranda saw them off and then she approached Shannon. Shannon, are you okay? Shannon nodded at Miranda who was acting like a big sister. Poyo Poyo not that. That Monica, her body was repaired. She was repaired by sucking the gigolo bastard's mana. Don't you think that's impossible when Isama? The reason Shannon was disturbed was because she saw the flow of a large amount of mana flowing out from Lyle and into Monica. It wasn't because she couldn't accept Monica's death and lost her cool. Miranda shrugged and warned her. Don't call Lyle gigolo bastard. More importantly, I have some business to take care of, so I'll act alone. Shannon clutched Miranda's clothes. She was calmer now than when the battle was going on, but she was still looking scared from uneasiness. By yourself? That's dangerous, Wanisama. 
Miranda said it's all right to the worried Shannon and looked at the bandits lying down on the floor. They were restrained by Miranda's sticky thread. Around ten people seemed to have escaped during the battle. Miranda approached Sophia who was watching over the bandits. I'll go observe the situation for a bit. Please watch over these guys while I'm gone. Sophia stopped her in panic. Please stop taking action alone. There are enemies who escaped, so it's still dangerous. Most of all it'll disturb the party's cohesion. Miranda smiled slightly seeing Sophia who was able to express her opinion more clearly than before. Oh, how level-headed. But, it's unfortunate. I'm only going to block the entrance. Lyle is also unable to move, so we have to be as sure as sure can be. Arya who heard that approached. Then, I'll come with you. It's dangerous to go alone. Miranda looked around. It'll be fine. More importantly watch over these guys. I've restrained the black-clothed men really carefully, but bluntly speaking they're eerie, so I want the two of you to stay here. The black-clothed men certainly were skilled. It was simply Lyle was too strong that they were taken care of in the blink of an eye. Miranda thought of them as eerie because to her it looked like they were lacking emotions. Miranda couldn't help but feeling concerned of that. Just what's the deal with these guys? There were also wounded men. The adventurers were groaning, and yet the men in black clothes weren't making any sound at all. However they also weren't dead. I'll leave it to you. She said that and left the room. Miranda entered the passage and aimed towards floor B-29. Miranda's ardent was something to produce strings from her body. She was able to create strings from sticky strings until tough strings. She could use the string to block the entrance or set up a trap. Originally, doing something like that inside a dungeon was a manner violation among adventurers. If someone blocked a passage as they pleased, it would be a bother for the other adventurers. However, currently there were only her allies and enemies in this location. It was also possible that the bandits who escaped would attack their party once more. Though the possibility of that was extremely low. Miranda walked through the empty corridor while producing string in her surroundings. The strings were moving as though they had their own will. They entangled with each other and then weaved to make a shape. It created the shape of a skeletal structure that looked like a large feline carnivore. Miranda snapped her fingers. The passage of the dungeon was made from concrete, and yet soil appeared from somewhere and enveloped the skeletal structure as flesh before she created a spider when fighting Lyle. However, today she was using a black panther as her model. Miranda made the panther to be bigger than the real thing and got on its back, then the thing dashed through the passage and arrived at floor B-29. Miranda looked around. I'll have to thank Lyle. Miranda saw through that Lyle intentionally didn't kill the enemy. He must have been feeling considerate of them or perhaps of Shannon, who was still childish mentally. But, I'm a woman who will give payback for what has been done to me. The Black Panther broke into a run and entered the nearby rooms with Miranda on its back, searching for those who escaped. She didn't see any monsters. She guessed it was because Ludhor and his group had defeated them while following their party. And then Miranda muttered when she entered the third room. Here they are. There were several adventurers who had escaped inside the room. Miranda got down from the Black Panther and brushed up her hair. Go. The Panther growled and attacked the adventurers inside the room. She wouldn't kill them, but the adventurers who were attacked by the large Black Panther that was more than six meters big lost their consciousness. When the room got quiet, Miranda entered inside. She looked at the supplies. Oh, they really brought a lot here. Water and food, and then a mountain of consumable goods, like weapons and the like. Miranda smirked in front of those things. She looked for the container filled with water and threw away the content. The water was dumped on the floor, but the mysterious working of a dungeon absorbed that kind of discarded thing. 
After seeing the water disappearing as though it was seeping into the floor, Miranda replenished the water container with water created from magic in exchange. I'm not naive. I'll make you all regret targeting Shannon. Saying that, Miranda got back on the Black Panther and returned to where her comrades were. Floor B30 Arya approached one of the men in black clothes that were restrained. She did that in order to collect the weapons that fell nearby. She was on her guard while taking the weapon. When she glanced at the man, he had a blank gaze. Really, just what's with this? Miranda is going alone, and Lyle also fainted. It was then. The man muttered in a small voice. Sue la Sama. Arya turned towards the man, but she was unable to hear it clearly. What did you say? She glared at the man, but he didn't react at all. It would be better if he at least showed some kind of reaction, but the man in black clothes didn't say anything more after that. Just what's the deal with these guys? Arya sighed while moving away from the man. Clara was having a talk with Novum about their plans for after this. Because Lyle was currently unavailable, the girls had to take action by themselves. It's dangerous to stay here like this. Let's start moving immediately. Clara also agreed with Novum's suggestion. I don't mind but, what are we going to do about them? Novum answered Clara's question coldly. Novum who was flustered from worrying about Lyle couldn't be found there. We don't have any leeway to take them with us to the surface. They're academy students or rather they're nobles, so it's troublesome to deal with them. Even if they brought them back it would be troublesome if those students harbored unjustified resentment towards them. After Novum said that, Clara guessed it. It will be troublesome even if we hand them over to the guild. For better or worse, Arumsas was a city where the academy had a greater authority than the adventurer guild. A lot of the people that were enrolled into the academy were young people from wealthy houses like nobles or successful merchants. The enemies that attacked Clara and the others were also nobles. Obviously this would become troublesome. I also agree, but I'm worried about what Lyle-san will think. In the end, Lyle-san didn't kill them. Won't he oppose leaving them here? However, Novum was cold-hearted to the end. The devotion that she directed towards Lyle wasn't directed to the attackers in the slightest. It's realistically impossible to take all of them along with us. Besides, even if we hand over the academy students, who are the ringleaders of this, to the authorities, at best they will only get expelled. There might be retaliation from the Sirkri house, because they attacked Miranda-san and Shannon-chan though. Certainly, it would be impossible to move while bringing along more than 40 people who were previously targeting them. Even if they protected them while moving towards the surface, the food and water were limited. Even if they obtained the enemy's belongings, their party numbered fewer than the enemy. Clara herself didn't want to do something like moving towards the surface while protecting people who they couldn't lower their guard against. Besides, the possibility that trouble would occur after returning them to the surface was high. Considering the hasty and simplistic actions of the attackers, it was obvious that they would only hold unjustified resentment for them. You're right. Then, it might be better to move while Lyosan is unconscious. Novum nodded. Let's start preparing to leave. Besides, this is only their just desserts. Clara felt slightly scared at Novum, who wasn't like usual. Is it because we were targeted? Clara also started preparing to leave. The round table room inside the jewel. When I noticed, I was sitting on my chair. The ancestors sitting around the round table were applauding. Congrats, you safely finished the task. We never thought that you would finish it this fast. The grinning third asked me about the task this time. Lyle, what do you honestly think about the task this time? I reflected in front of everybody. Was it to make me aware that I relied too much on arts? I was relying too much on arts until now. 
the incident this time was enough to make me painfully aware of that. With a party that didn't function properly, I couldn't do anything myself without any art. The second scratched his cheek. You aren't wrong, but that's not all. What we wanted to see was how Lyle would act in a situation where you were forbidden to use arts. Me? The ancestors nodded. The fourth spoke about the true meaning of the task this time. There is also a bad side to relying on arts. But Lyle was also right in the aspect of skillfully using them. The third also nodded. After all using a tool correctly is only something natural. Well, it's also important to be aware of its inconvenience but it can also be said that there really isn't any problem with it. It seemed that the ancestors were thinking that there wouldn't be any problem even if I fought by relying on arts. In that case, why were they testing me? How I would act, was something like that important? The sixth seemed to think that I didn't get it and laughed heartily. In short, what we wanted to see was what kind of solution Lyle would come up with in a situation without arts. Honestly speaking, it would be fine even if you were more cunning you know? The fifth spoke expressionlessly. The task was to conquer 4B30 in a situation where you were forbidden to use arts. The silver weapon was also forbidden to be used, but that in itself isn't a problem. Listen well, conquer 4B30 without arts. That was the task that we gave you. I thought for a bit, and then realized. Could it be, what you mean is, it would have been fine no matter what kind of method I used? The seventh snapped his fingers. Of course. Did we say to accomplish the task with only your party? We didn't say that. In other words, you were free to do anything no matter what. I stood up in shock. PLE please wait. Isn't that strange? The fourth tilted his head. I don't understand what you mean by strange. I took a deep breath, and then I spoke of my thought to the ancestors. You all gave me that task because you were worried of me overly relying on the arts, isn't it? Right. The second nodded. Well, that was one of the reasons I guess. I banged my hands on the table. Then, why are you saying that I was free to do anything? I thought that meant you all were telling me to train things like our individual ability, or teamwork, or that kind of things more. I was thinking that I was given this task because the ancestors were viewing our insufficient capability as a problem. The second folded his arms and nodded. I also thought that. In fact, you all had come to Arumsa's, so I thought it would also be fine if your party members polished their respective abilities and you increased the size of the party. It wouldn't take just several months. It might take a year or two year. It might even take you ten years to learn and grow stronger here. Even so that would be fine in my opinion. However the third laughed at the second's opinion. Is that so? I think that'd be a waste of time. In fact Lyle would be able to use arts if he accomplished the task. If it was me then I'd join a party that could conquer floor B30. It wasn't like we told you to defeat the floor boss with your own party. The third said that the task could be accomplished by asking someone who could defeat the floor boss to do so while we only needed to learn by observation. It made me felt dizzy. Using that way wouldn't solve anything. But, isn't that the easiest method to accomplish the task? Lyle, you're a bit too hard-headed. The fourth was exasperated at the third's opinion. How many parties do you think there are that can defeat the floor boss? Besides you would need to be lucky to find one that would aim until floor B30. One shouldn't rely on a method that is largely relying on luck factor. That's right. That's the right way, isn't it? The calm fourth fixed the position of his glasses. If it was me, I'd make a request to a party that's capable to conquer that floor and come along with them. You're the same as him. What was different from the third's opinion was only in taking initiative to make a request to accomplish the task. The solving method itself was mostly the same. 
It didn't depend on luck factor, but in exchange, there would be a financial expense. There wouldn't be any problem even if you splurged somewhat extravagantly. Lyle has that much assets for that after all. Well, just remember that in the end this is only the talk of what I'd do if I was given the same task. I was exasperated at the opinions of these two that were mostly the same and turned my gaze to the silent fifth. Was this person also thinking of a strange solution for this task? The fifth was offended that I was sending him a doubting gaze. What's with those eyes? If it's me, then I'd use a solution that'll also be more useful for the future. By the way, what is that solution? The fifth put his hand on his chin. Let's see. First, I'd invite strong people and capable people into the party right away. You can also scout someone from another party. The fifth spoke simply that I could just gather capable people from the start. No, I won't be troubled if I could do that. Idiot. Your reputation wasn't bad before your continuous failures. When your fame was on the rise after completing Damien's request, you could have used it to recruit capable people by giving them good conditions. Otherwise, you could also just hire people temporarily. There were a lot of things you could do. When I thought that I didn't want to hear this anymore, the sixth affirmed my thinking. I also understand how Lyle feels. You wanted to defeat the floor boss with your own party, didn't you? I get it. I really get it. That's right. I believe that if it's the sixth you would under. Well, if it's me, then I'll cooperate with multiple parties to conquer floor B30. In the first place, whether you're hiring people or welcoming them as party member, it will be troublesome to keep the relationship forever. There is this thing called affinity between people. You can first try working together with them, and if it goes well, then you can accept them as a party member after that. The sixth said that if I simply needed numbers, then ask for the cooperation of other parties. How should I say it, after being told this far then certainly I got the feeling that I was mistaken. It would be better if I got closer with other parties. If I did that, I might be able to obtain their cooperation. It took time to finish the task because I was thinking that I had to do it with our own strength. The seventh told me the true meaning of the task. Lyle, regarding the result, it didn't matter how you finished the task. Even if your party spent several years working hard to grow stronger, surely that will also be useful for your future. You could also accomplish the task by making use of your wit. That kind of cleverness will be useful for your future. There won't be any problem even if you relied on money. Because surely you will earn a lot of money from here on too. Even if you invited skilled people to your party, or even if you only hired them temporarily, that also wouldn't be a problem. Though it was surprising how you created Porter. The third was really delighted. That was really surprising. I never even imagined that Lyle would finish the task with that kind of method. In a sense you've gone above and beyond. It seemed that even the ancestors didn't expect that I would create Porter that would then become a powerful ally in conquering the dungeon. I powerlessly sat down on my chair. It would be great if you told me that beforehand. The third was grinning. We spoke of the task several times. It was Lyle's own fault for not noticing it. On the contrary, the second praised me. I think this is better instead. You recognized what was lacking from you and your comrades and tried to improve on it. And those idiot duo also got fired up thanks to Miranda-chan. It seemed the second thought that the two of them were growing up instead due to Miranda-san provoking them. The fifth looked at me and smiled. In the end, there isn't anything like an absolutely correct answer. Even so, you can only continue to make your answer, that's life. What was important was how you accomplished the task. This makes me feel like an idiot for worrying so much like that. The sixth was laughing. Worry a lot. However, after worrying, make your decision. The worst choice is to not find any answer after all. I looked around. 
Come to think of it, what's happening outside? The fourth shrugged. We don't understand because Lyle fainted. Well, you will be able to learn it soon. It seemed the function of the jewel was down because my mana was absorbed too much. I wondered if such a thing was possible but, according to the ancestors, the function was recovering so there was no need to worry. The seventh let out a small sigh. However, Poyo Poyo, no, Monica was surprising. She could heal even from that state. No, is it better to call it repaired? With this as the beginning, an idle talk began after that. I also talked with the ancestors inside the jewel until I woke up. Night. Lyle's party arrived at floor B5. Novum slipped out alone from the room where they were camping in and entered a room where there was no monster or human inside. She confirmed that there wasn't the presence of anyone around, then she touched the concrete wall inside the darkness. She was expressionless. And then she muttered. Those who targeted Lyle Sama's life are unforgivable. Even if Miranda-san had already taken measure, it wasn't perfect. From the spot that Novum touched with her hand, red lines formed on the concrete wall like blood veins. The pulsing wall was gradually affecting the whole dungeon. Novum closed her eyes. Aye, aye, there they are. They're trembling in floor B-29. The way she spoke was as though she could see with her own eyes how the attackers at floor B-29 were doing. Like that Novum's hand moved away. When she opened her eyes, she returned to the room where they were camping as though nothing had happened. Floor B-29 The attackers were gathered. Ludhor's wounded face was wrapped with bandage. He was muttering it hurt, it hurt while complaining to the surroundings. You guys, do the preparations, quickly. Miranda untied the restraints before their party left. It hurt Ludhor's pride. How dare those guys make fun of me. When I get outside, I'll punish them thoroughly. Ludhor felt thirsty and took out water from the belongings. He drank while enduring his pain. The inside of his mouth was also seriously wounded and it hurt. Damn it. If I know something like this could happen, then I'd learn healing magic. Oi, you guys, what are you doing? When he looked around, the adventurers and his friends were crouching while holding their stomachs. My, my stomach. Is the water spoiled? Oi, someone bring medicine. Why is this happening to me? Everyone had diarrhea. Ludhor's stomach was also getting odd and he went pale, but then the room suddenly shook. Wah, what? What is it this time? Ludhor had been beaten up, his stomach hurt, and he was getting cornered mentally. Everyone was also going through the same things as him. In that state they were witnessing monsters being born from the wall. Ludhor and the others opened their eyes wide. No, no way. The number of monsters also wasn't just one or two. The variety of monsters that were troublesome even among those appearing at floor B-29 were coming out one after another. They were looking at Ludhor and the others while drooling. It seemed they were hungry after appearing only just now. Ludhor pointed his left arm. He fired his magic, but the number of monsters he defeated was two or three at best. Monsters were appearing one after another inside the room. No. No. Ludhor continued firing his magic, but screams quickly rose from the surroundings. The attackers were killed without being able to fight back. Ludhor got surrounded. Even his magic stopped appearing from his hand and he became unable to resist. He began crying, and then he spoke with a feeble voice. P.L.E., please help. The words that he wouldn't listen to when they were said by the adventurers he attacked no matter how many times those words were said. Ludhor continued to yell those words. Help! I'll do anything. I'll do anything so please help. I won't do anything like this anymore. I won't do it again so please. 
he continued to scream towards the monsters who couldn't be talked with. The monsters opened their large mouths towards the screaming Ludhor and bit. The screams of Ludhor and the other attackers spread throughout floor B29 inside the dungeon, but there was no other adventurers there other than them. In other words, no help would come. Chapter 66, I Am Kind The next day after Lyle's party returned from the dungeon, Miranda and the others received summons from the Adventurer Guild. The reason was the death of a lot of adventurers who entered the dungeon at the same time with them. Miranda and the others were called because there was a possibility of their involvement with that. In fact they were involved, but didn't report it. It was because they understood completely that it would become a problem if they said that they were attacked. Other than Miranda, Sophia and Arya also attended. This time the Adventurer Guild was investigating seriously because there were academy students who died. That the students who died were nobles was also one of the reasons that the problem became big. The academy forcefully demanded the guild to investigate the matter and so the guild poured considerable focus on the investigation. The investigating staff from the Adventurer Guild was a thin man wearing black-rimmed glasses with a desolate-looking head. The staff acted impudently, borrowing the influence of the academy. He continuously questioned the three of them insistently. Why isn't your party leader here? Miranda shrugged. The leader has only just woken up. As expected, he hasn't recovered his stamina enough that we can bring him here. Lyle woke up this morning. It was the fact that he seemed exhausted, but it wasn't to the degree that he would be unable to bring himself here. But, Miranda thought that there would be no problem if she came personally rather than bringing Lyle to this place. The staff was looking displeased. Normally he would be bowing and scraping because she was a noble and also Damien's acquaintance, but this time he was getting cocky because there was the order from the academy. Well, doesn't matter. Then, I'll ask you to explain in detail about what happened after your party entered the dungeon. First, did you encounter the people on this list inside the dungeon? Arya and Sophia were sitting with awkward expressions. Miranda took a look at the list. We didn't. We only explored floor B30 and then returned back. She lied with a smile. The staff swung down his fist on the table. His fist was small and thin, so it only made a small sound. Check it again carefully. If you make even one lie, that will become a serious problem. Miranda tilted her head. Serious problem? Adventurers dying inside the dungeon is a normal thing, isn't it? Were you investigating that this seriously every time it happened? The staff stared at Miranda while speaking of the situation in irritation. It was because he knew Miranda was a daughter of a Viscount house. Young people of noble houses died. The academy also told us to clarify the reason it happened. As a fellow noble, you should be able to understand that much, shouldn't you? He is doing the right thing. It seemed the staff was thinking like that. Even when facing Miranda, his cocky attitude didn't crumble. Miranda let out a small sigh. And? The staff continued. I'm telling you to talk about everything that happened in the dungeon this time. What kind of monster you fought in which floor, and then what kind of action you made. Miranda shrugged and spoke. I don't remember all that. Because, normally we never reported those kind of things. I'll try to remember as much as possible after this. Are we finished now? Miranda continued seeing that vein was pulsing on the staff's forehead. I can understand making an effort because it's a request from the academy but, our answer will be the same no matter how many times you asked. Like that the questioning continued until the staff got tired and let them go. After the questioning was over, Miranda stretched outside the Adventurer Guild. There was a large commotion since the morning because more than 50 adventurers died. Miranda was elusively lying for several hours during the questioning until they were let go. 
Aria and Sophia who witnessed that stared suspiciously at Miranda. Miranda, it's amazing that you could lie like that. Sophia Sam looked dissatisfied. At the very least we should tell the truth and expose their deeds to the public. Why do we have to lie like that? Sophia insisted that they should bring the attackers back with them to the surface when they were going to withdraw from the dungeon. Miranda appreciated her diligence and kindness, but she treated that request coldly because she was aware that it would be meaningless to do what she asked. Then, do you intend to tell them that we abandoned those people? Even if we brought them back, they wouldn't reflect on what they did and would even resent us unjustly. Even if we speak the truth, it will only increase our problem. Poetic justice. It's fine if you just think of it as them being ruined because of their own deed. Sophia's shoulders dropped. It was realistically impossible to bring back everyone to the surface. No matter how great Porter was, it couldn't be filled with more than 40 people and still move. Even if it was possible, Novum absolutely wouldn't allow it. Arya pressed her forehead with her hand. Miranda, you went too far. Sophia has been bothered about it since yesterday. She isn't thinking only about herself like you. Miranda smiled at Aria's barbed statement. Oh, I can't just ignore that. You made it sounded like I'm a cold-blooded woman who is only thinking of myself. Sophia shook her head. I think that Miranda-san and Novum-san are correct. But, I can't accept it. Besides, it might be rude to say this but, that, it's... Arya spoke in Sophia's place seeing she was troubled like that. Bluntly speaking you're a cold-blooded woman. Be aware of that for a bit. Because of your fault the party is tattered. The atmosphere also feels bad. In front of Arya who was like that and the dissatisfied-looking Sophia, Miranda said. Both of you're really rude. I'll say this, I am kind you know. The two made a face that said kind where? And looked at Miranda. Miranda nodded. If you aren't convinced, then come with me. I'll show the two of you what a harem party is. She said that, then the three of them headed to somewhere. A young man appeared in the Adventurer Guild. He passed by Miranda and the two others and entered inside. It was Nurx. Today, too, he visited the receptionist with a smile and talked with the reception woman who had a serious look. Can't you do something so we can enter the dungeon? The reception woman was blushing slightly while endeavoring to treat Nurx politer than usual. I think it's difficult right now because we're busy with various things. But, a lot of adventurers have just died, so I believe that after the cause is investigated there will be recruitment for new parties to be permitted to enter the dungeon. Normally the staff would finish it shortly by saying no way, but there were few women who could take that kind of attitude in front of a refreshing handsome young man like Nurx. Really? Then what should I do to be able to be included within the quota? Nurx Sand's party is too small in scale. If you can ask four supporters to join your party exclusively. A young man who had just become an adventurer was watching that. His equipment was of lower quality than Nurk's, and he also lost in appearance. He was watching the two who seemed to be intimate with each other in frustration. Even though she told me to not talk to her needlessly because she was in the middle of working when it was my turn. The party of the young man who looked like he was going to cry consisted of only men. The harem parties that were famous in Arumsa's were Lyle's party and the party of Nurx who only recently moved here. Naturally, the young man also knew that Nurx also had other women staying at his side. A senior adventurer was exasperated seeing the young man like that. You, could it be you have a yearning for a harem party? Obviously. Every single day there is only the smell of guys around me. I want a woman's warmth around me. The senior turned his gaze towards a trio of women. Over there was the figures of female warriors who dressed in an outfit that exposed a lot of their body, but their body was muscular. There are three women there, how about you call out to them? The young man protested fiercely. 
Not that bunch that look like Amazonies, my preference is a girl like a dainty magician that will make me want to protect her. The senior who didn't have the slightest interest in the young man's preference replied HMPH. But. Then, it's better that you give up. No way. I became an adventurer because I want to be popular. Rather than giving up on my dream, plowing the farm in my village is still better. The senior was looking at the young man like he was looking at a pitiful thing. You, look around you carefully. The young man looked carefully around him just as he was told. There are also a lot of female adventurers, right? There are many, but, somehow everyone look boorish, they're too burly that it killed my enthusiasm. Muscular Warriors The females other than them were also burly and weren't inferior against the men. A woman who becomes an adventurer will one day become like that. Lies Because, I saw the party of that Lyle guy. I found my ideal there. The senior thrust the reality towards the young man who felt envious seeing Lyle's party. That guy called Lyle is first class if you look at him as an adventurer. It's natural that women are surrounding him but, you should just give up on a harem. Why is that? The senior got a slightly distant look. Even though it's already hard dealing with just one woman, dealing with a lot of them, that's impossible. In front of the senior who was making an enlightened look, even the young man started to slightly think that there might be some kind of problem with a harem party. It was a narrow alley with dim lighting. Sophia was taken there by Miranda. There she saw an unbelievable sight. In front of her were the party members of Nurks who Lyle got close with. For people were gathering in a narrow alley where there was no one looking. The atmosphere was on edge. The four were glaring at each other. Arya and Sophia were huddling close to each other and trembling from seeing that scene. You bitch, you were too close to Nurks even though you're the newcomer. The woman dressed as a warrior grabbed the collar of the glasses girl wearing academy uniform. But, the glasses girl didn't stay quiet. Don't touch me. You stink. What did you say, you bitch? It was a scene of the newcomer glasses girl being surrounded by the other three. Eh? Eh? What in the world is this? While Sophia's mind was in chaos, the talk was getting even more complicated. The female dressed as a thief was joining her hands behind her head. Still, you're also bothersome. When Nurx isn't here, can you stop acting like you're the leader and giving us orders? In addition, your orders are also often mistaken. The girl dressed as a magician continued. Your attitude like you're supporting Nurx, it's irritating watching that. This time it was the warrior woman who became the criticized side. However, after a little bit, this time it was the thief girl who got harped on by everyone else. When they noticed the event developed into an exchange of blows. Miranda explained to the two. You two see how they're hitting at body parts that are hidden by their clothes? Man won't notice anything even if he is looking at those spots. As expected even Nurks would notice if they were wounded. The four were hitting at inconspicuous places so that wouldn't happen. At the end, everyone hit and insulted each other once more, and when it was over the four broke up and went their own way. Arya was trembling. Lies. Because, when I saw them before they were smiling. All four of them together. Sophia had also seen a similar sight. Because she had seen that harmonious sight, she was bothered why their own party was in a state this horrible. T, this is worse than even us. Miranda was laughing. On holidays, all of them are basically on their own except when they are together with Nurk San. They will badmouth the other three girls as they please to other adventurers who they got acquainted with in Aramsas. The women who insulted and hit each other. This was a side of the women who Nurks didn't know anything about. Miranda continued. I think they're also doing various things in places where no one is looking, but I don't like that kind of thing, so. Miranda-san. Sophia hugged Miranda. 
I was wrong. I've been thinking about it since some time ago. Miranda San, you said those horrible things to us were actually for our sake, wasn't it? Arya was surprised. Eh, is that so? Miranda was also making a troubled face. Sophia continued. I was convinced after seeing those four today. If you feel like it, you'll be able to drive us out and live together with Lyle Dono, and yet you don't do that. You're still the same kind of Miranda Sam like when we first met. I, I'm sorry. Sophia cried and apologized. Miranda was only smiling wryly in front of her. Even Arya was infected and cried. Miranda, just why are you always this kind? Miranda could do nothing else except soothing the two who were crying. The next day. Miranda sighed inside her room. Ha, huh, how did it end up like this? Since the morning Arya and Sophia were becoming emotionally attached to her. Lyle who saw that looked really happy. That in itself wasn't a problem, but in Miranda's plan she wanted to put some distance with Arya and Sophia with the two of them and kept it like that. But just because she showed them the ugly quarrel of fellow woman yesterday, their evaluation of Miranda increased too much. Well, I don't dislike their stupidity that is like Shannon so it's fine I guess. If the two of them looked up to her, then that was also fine. They had stopped being puppets that only obeyed Novum's opinion without saying anything now, and from here on she also intended to foster friendship with them moderately. In the first place, the cause of Miranda provoking them was Novum. Both of them blindly believed the opinion of Novum, who sometimes issued them instructions and led them by the nose. They looked up to Novum more than towards Lyle. Because they were doing that too much, Miranda guided them so that things became like she wanted. Miranda sat on the chair quietly for a while, staring at outside the window. Then she began compounding. It was because of the necessity of making her tools, like the explosives by herself. Now then, perhaps this time I should prepare something with slightly lower strength. When she was going to start her work, the sound of running footsteps came from the corridor. These footsteps belonged to Shannon. Furthermore, it was her footsteps when she was in a good mood. Wani Sama. Shannon entered the room only after knocking and waiting for the reply. Shannon was dejected when she warned her, but she immediately smiled again. It seemed that the reason was Arya and Sophia. I heard it, Wani Sama. As I thought Wani Sama is kind Wani Sama. I completely thought that my Wani Sama is a slightly scary person. Miranda wanted to hold her head hearing her little sister say that with a smile. Shannon was ignorant of the ways of the world. Miranda was worried about how she was extremely easy to be tricked. That was why her misunderstanding should be corrected. Shannon, I'm certainly kind. Yes. But you see, that's because that's what Lyle wished for. That's right. Eh? After Shannon replied energetically, she felt puzzled at Miranda's line. Miranda spoke to Shannon who was looking at her with a perplexed face. You see, I love Lyle. I can't forgive that there are other women around that Lyle. Do you understand until this far? I, I somehow understand. It was doubtful whether Shannon actually understood or not, but Miranda had to correct her mistaken impression. It's not rare for nobles to have a mistress or a lover. It's not like I really mind even if there are other women. I'll tolerate them. That's how much I love Lyle. But you see, that doesn't mean I want the number of women to increase. I absolutely don't want to recommend more women like Novum. Shannon nodded several times wordlessly. Let's talk hypothetically. I who entered the party after everyone else drive out the other party members. Do you know what Lyle will think about that? Shannon thought for a bit. I don't know. Miranda smiled. It's good that you're honest. Surely it won't be pleasant for Lyle. And then he will think of me as a nuisance. It's unforgivable that Gigolo Bastard will think of Wanisama as a nuisance. 
That's so. It's unforgivable, isn't it? In that case, what do you think will be the best act to take? I don't know. Miranda wasn't exasperated even when looking at Shannon who honestly proclaimed she didn't understand. Rather, she even thought that her stupid side was cute. It's simple. Don't let the number of women to increase more than this. And then become the number one among the members right now. That's the best way. Shannon was perplexed at that answer of her big sister while asking timidly. Oh, Wanisama? If that's the case, won't it be no good if you often make that gigolo bastard feel scared? Miranda sometimes would show Lyle the quarrel between women. From her explanation just now, that action felt unnecessary if she wanted to be liked by Lyle. It's necessary. If we get along at the surface, Lyle will think that things are going well and increase the number of girls. Lyle, he is wonderful. I believe that a lot of women will appear aiming for him. I've got to be careful because Novum will pick the capable women among them and say that it's all right for them to join the party. Shannon was dumbfounded. She was making a face that said she couldn't believe her big sister. After all, her big sister was seriously saying that Lyle was just too wonderful. Of course Shannon couldn't believe her. If, this is just what if. Hum? If that gigolo bastard isn't particularly bothered with a women's quarrel or that he isn't interested in Arya or Sophia. Miranda replied with a straight face. I'll immediately drive them out from the party. Obviously. I can do something like that right away, there also won't be any problem at all. Shannon was already tearful. Oh, Wanisama, if I'm being a nuisance then you. No way. Shannon is my cute little sister. Don't worry. Shannon was making a face that was saying she couldn't feel relieved at all. The best outcome will be if I monopolize Lyle for myself. It will be better if there isn't any other woman, but I think someone at Lyle's level will need one or two mistresses. You know, he is a former noble and also earns a lot of money, right? Because of that, as expected, I want to fix the party with only the current members. Ah, if possible I want to secure Clara. A driver for Porter is essential after all. Shannon was silently listening in front of Miranda who was talking of her ideal. Several days after I finished the task. I visited Clara San. We talked like usual in the library's break room. This time it wasn't a talk about work. Actually, I'm thinking of leaving Aramsa's. It won't be right away, but when our preparation is finished we will head to the Royal Capital Central first. They wouldn't stay there for long. But, that place was just right before they moved ahead. Clara San smiled with a slightly lonely look. I see. It will be lonely. But, thanks to working together with Lyle-san, I was also able to earn a lot of money. There was also the matter with Porter, it was a good experience for me. I made a request to Clarisan. Also, I have one request. Clarisan said that you want the same thing as the reward of your cooperation in completing Porter, didn't you? As expected, it will take some time to prepare the same thing like Porter. Clarisan tilted her head. No, it will be enough for me if I can receive the prototype model. No, no, a promise is a promise. Actually, Monica secured the parts at Damien's place, but we can't obtain the magic or no matter what. And so, I'm thinking to search for the magic or in other regions in order to fulfill that promise. Clara San was slightly surprised. I, is that so? I don't wish for Lyle Sand to go that far though. The third was noisy inside the jewel. Seduce her just like usual. Can't you do it when you're being conscious of it? Hey, quickly make Clara Chan into your formal party member already. The third who loved books really liked Clara San. Because of that he wouldn't stop insisting that Clara San should be added to my party. Clara San, won't you go together with us in order to fulfill the promise? 
Clarissa slightly shook her head at my proposal. That's an attractive proposal, but I'll refuse. I'm a supporter, besides there is a library in Arumsa's here. Arumsa's must be a really good place for Clarissa. But, I was troubled like this. It's not like you will need to live outside this city forever. But, don't you want to see the outside world? Actually, I had been living all the time inside the mansion until some time ago and didn't know much about the world. Clara San smiled wryly. I've had the feeling that's the case. I, is that so? We, well, simply put, won't you go traveling with the premise that someday you will return to Aramsis? You will be able to make new experiences in the world outside. That's a charming suggestion, but, I. The third was fretting at Clara San's reluctance to accept the proposal and got noisy. Be more serious. What's with this? Even though usually you would trick woman with a sweeter move. That was a terrible accusation. There I thought of one thing. Come to think of it, Aramsas is gathering books from around the whole world, isn't it? Clara San immediately became talkative. It seemed she really loved book. Yes. However, it can't be said that it has everything. There are also books that are carefully kept only in that region after all, and there are also many cases when even though they have a library like Arumsa's, people cannot bring out the books from there. I want to try reading those books, but only this is. I simply spoke what was on my mind. Won't it be fine if you just read it right at the actual place? Clara San gasped in realization. That's certainly true. One year? No, if I travel around for several years to read various things and then return here to produce the book. Lyle San, please take me with you. She accepted surprisingly easily. Damien's Laboratory I visited there and handed Porter's blueprint to Damien. Is it all right? I think you'll be able to earn more if you make a business with it by yourself. The reason was simply for money. I asked the Academy to purchase the blueprint of Porter. I'm moving forward, and I won't be able to do nothing except developing this. It will be a waste to leave it alone so I think it will be better if the Academy handles it in order to popularize it too. The fourth sounded disappointed. If Lyle was a merchant, it might have been possible for you to become a big merchant by using this. He sounded frustrated, but I was an adventurer. I also didn't plan on doing business using Porter in my spare time. Damien handed the blueprint to Lily San. Got it. I'll deal with the Academy. This will become a good business, so surely they will buy it at a high price. Ah, the prototype model will be purchased as an example, is that all right? I'm fine with it. Damien looked at Porter's blueprint and put his hand on his chin. Even so, with this, it will also be possible to use it as a transport for massive quantities of items. Perhaps I'll also make one and use it for purchasing from here on. It seemed there would also be times when Damien would need to buy various materials necessary for research and he considered Porter as being attractive for his traveling method at that time. Damien looked at me. And, when will you depart? There are also various procedures to take care of, so I think it will be in one more month. I'm planning to go to Central and then decide there where we're going next. Damien shrugged. It'll be lonely that someone whose name I remembered will be gone. Well, it'll be nice if we can meet again, Lyle. I hope so, Damien. I got acquainted with someone really eccentric. I felt a bit lonely when it became the time to leave. Epilogue The preparation to move out from the house of THR Sirkri sisters was finished. The house had become really clean. It seemed that the house was purchased in order for Miranda San and Shannon to live in, but Miranda San said that it was unneeded if they departed on a journey and sold it. It seemed that from the beginning it was a property that was given to them, so they could do as they liked with it. Miranda-san, you have really made up your mind, huh? 
When I said that, Miranda-san turned a smile towards me. It's unnecessary if I'm coming with Lyle. Well, take care of me from here on too. I honestly felt happy to have affection directed towards me, but it was embarrassing. Even so. Miranda, is it okay to put the luggage here? Miranda-san, what should I do with this? Arya-san and Sophia-san came bringing the luggage of Miranda-san and the others. The friction until now was like a lie. I asked the two of them what happened, but it seemed Miranda-san was intentionally provoking them to motivate them. Now that the misunderstanding had been resolved, they got along well like before. Wait a second. Lyle, I'll go to do my preparation. I saw off Miranda-san walking towards the two of them, then my gaze turned towards Porter. Monica said that she would remodel it since the morning and slipped below Porter doing something. If I install this part, Porter's spec will jump up by three times. Well, I'm lying though. But, 30%? No, it should improve by 20%? She muttered by herself noisily. Clara San was also helping with Monica's maintenance work. She was busy since the morning. Because it would be a journey without using connecting coach, we didn't need to pay attention to a departure schedule. It was appreciated. Novum came to me. Lyle Sama, I finished the procedure at the Adventurer Guild. I asked Novum to take care of the procedure at the Guild in my place. My bad. If I'm the one who went they would nag and make snide remarks at me for some reason. Skilled adventurers were leaving from Arumsas one after another to another region. The bad service of the Adventurer Guild was one reason for that, but would the day come that the staff there recognized it? Novum was also making a slightly tired face. The number of adventurers decreased by a lot after all. In addition even we will be leaving, so they seem to be troubled. Ludhor, Zausa, Benir, the malicious adventurers had disappeared, but thanks to that the number of parties entering the dungeon became few. Looking at the whole it didn't seem like a great number but, if adventurers with great earning like us wanted to leave then the guild would try to hold us back. Especially me who caught the eye of Damien. I got persistently nagged by the staffs if I was going to betray this city. It helped that Novum went to take care of the procedure in my place. How long is Lyle Sama planning to stay in Central? I couldn't answer right away. Depends on the situation. I also have the feeling that it's still too early for us to head to the Free City Bime, and I also want to take a look at other regions before that. It'll be nice if there is a good place somewhere. Novum smiled. I believe that Lyle Sama will surely find it. Then, I'll also go to prepare. Novum also left me in order to pack her own things. I yawned and stretched up, then I filled my chest with anticipation of what kind of place we'd head to next. Shannon called out to me at that timing. She was holding a candy in her hand. What, you came to complain again? I made fun of her, but recently Shannon's condition was strange. We still quarreled, but sometimes she would look at me with a sad face. Just what was she thinking? Here, for you. Shannon was holding her favorite candy. My eyes opened wide. Is tomorrow going to rain spears? For you to share your candy with me, could it be poisoned? I said jokingly, but Shannon's reaction was bad. She made a face that was about to cry and shook her head. She said to me, I give you this because you're pitiful. In exchange, please take care of Wanisama, okay? I think that perhaps I won't be able to stop her. What was this girl saying? Even though I had just confirmed that Miranda-san's personality wasn't as bad as I thought, this girl was giving off a tragic feeling by herself. I threw the candy I received into my mouth. Ah, this is tasty. Shannon looked at me and made a sad expression. Oi, stop making that face. Just what are you sad about? It's fine. It's better that you don't know. But, I'm slightly pitying you. I'm slightly pitying this gigolo bastard, for real. 
don't call me gigolo bastard. You, could it be this is some kind of new harassment? As I thought I hated the existence that was like a little sister. Inside the Jewel The group who was watching Lyle getting along with Shannon had serious faces. The scene that would usually make them say a joke was met with silence. The fourth looked at the second. The second who was resolving himself took a small deep breath and then looked at Lyle's face. Lyle, who was having an exchange with Shannon as though they were brother and sister had become really tough now even from the viewpoint of the six of them. He was like a completely different person compared to the beginning when he didn't know left from right. The second opened his mouth. I think it's time. The third nodded to those words. Yeah. If it's Lyle right now, it's not an art that is beyond him I think. Surely he'll be fine. Lyle had learned the second's art until the second stage. Everyone sensed that the time to teach the third stage, which was the last stage, had arrived. The second scratched his head with an embarrassed look. I also want to watch him for a bit more, but I will just be a nuisance to keep staying here. Lyle is already all right. The reason the memory of the ancestors was resurrected was to teach Lyle their arts. At the very least, that was what everyone thought. And then, they would vanish just like the first if they finished their role. The second looked at the silver grade sword floating silently inside the room of the round table. H.M., as expected in my case a bow will come out I think. Or perhaps it's only father who was special. Even though it's weighing my mind the answer won't come out, don't you think that's horrible? Everyone said, certainly with a small laugh. The second looked at Lyle with a gentle gaze. He is also still no good in many things, but I'll vanish around here. The second decided to entrust his art to Lyle. He believed that if the other ancestors were here, then surely they would guide Lyle. The fourth spoke with a lonely look. It will be lonely. The second smiled with a troubled look. I'll be sad if you guys are happy instead that I'll be gone. Well, perhaps it's just right to come until this far. The third also nodded. That's also true. In that case, I wonder if I'll be next in line. I wonder how will Lyle have become when the seventh vanish? The fifth analyzed jokingly. If he is drawing in woman with heavy love, then I think he will end up the same like the sixth, but even Miranda isn't a woman with that heavy of a love. It feels like he will be able to handle things well. The sixth's expression turned sour. I wish you won't compare him with me. Well, let's just consider it that right now he is growing nicely. Lyle's grandfather, the seventh, was hopelessly concerned with Lyle's future. To be able to see my grandson becoming adult who can stand on his own. That's something to be happy about. The second concluded. Yeah. I never thought that I would be able to see my descendant like this. Well, I'm just a memory while the actual person had died already though. The second looked at Lyle, who was frolicking with Shannon, with a slightly lonely look.